Ladies and gentlemen, welcome oh. to this week's podcast. I am joined again by my good friends, Mr. Tyler Cook and Daniel Wilson. Hello. I am Richard Ga- uh, Grant. Who are you? Fucking hell. This is Richard Grannon. What's my name? Richard Grannon. It's not good when you fuck your own name. Up, <laughs> What's my it? name? What's daddy? my name, daddy? Um, <laughs> well, we've started, by. Well, that was minutes. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Today, we're going to be discussing... Well, 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 it's a fairly controversial conversation. We're going to be talking, having a frank conversation about steroids and the perils of bodybuilding as we sit here, juice bombed. As a bodybuilder sits <laughs> here. Bodybuilders and uh, yeah. two competitive and bodybuilders. Guy, uh, both yeah. bodybuilders. Yeah, yeah this no, is terrible. Not a bodybuilder so, so anymore. You, you, can, you can speak from a position of authority on this, but we'll start with... Um, let's start with, with uh, steroids. I've had this conversation with, with both of you. Um, and I think it's interesting and it's important, uh, especially for young men who are watching this. How much steroids should a, a, an 18 year old boy be on? Um, zero. We're going with zero. Zero. Or we could say zip. zip. Or we could say non, nish, nada. 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 It's a good one. What are you saying, Tyler? Zero. Okay. hundred percent zero. I've, I've, I've moaned about this a million times and... I don't ever want to start this way, but let's start this way. It's I, going to be a whingy listen, podcast. It's going to be a whingy We're podcast. In. We're in. We're Especially in. as what looks like Buckle a hypocritical up. bodybuilder. Mm. But I genuinely believe anabolic steroids, when we talk about steroids, we have to define it mm. because there's things like TRT and we'll probably sure. get into that. Sure. Taking steroids to me, how most people would present that argument would be you're taking something to elevate your level above and beyond what's normal. Mm-hmm. Okay. So should an 18 year old be taking something to go above and beyond the norm? Absolutely not. Can you... Can you tell me why why you think that? Like, why shouldn't yeah. an eighteen year old? They've seen the social media posts. They've got the body dysmorphia. They think a man should look like he's completely juiced up. Yeah. Why should an eighteen year old not start injecting above and beyond? Well, I think at eighteen, I mean, I, I was eighteen. I was competing in natural bodybuilding shows, mm. so I it wasn't on my radar then. Mm. I think bodybuilding or the extreme end of bodybuilding requires steroid use. Yes, that's undeniable. Yeah. But I don't think at 18, you're aware of whether that's the path you want to go down or not. Right. So I think if you are 18, you should always be spending two, three, four years training naturally because it builds a nice basis of knowledge. It mm. gives you an idea of whether you even like it or not. You mm. know, it's much like how people, if I got into snowboarding tomorrow and bought all the top end gear, the top board, the top helmet, and I don't need, I hadn't even snowboarded. I don't mm. really see the point. Yeah. With steroids, it's not like, buying expensive snowboarding gear, you're risking your health and developing a long-term dependency. So the reason they shouldn't go above and beyond is because I think you get sucked into that world and you're not sure if you're even there for it. Yeah. So I think at 18, I mean, I've said it before, if you're not making money from bodybuilding and it's not your profession, you shouldn't be taking steroids full stop. I do kind of believe that. Um, We can't be ignorant to the fact that all Bodybuilders use steroids. Yes, they do, unless they compete naturally like I did and they do urine testers and polygraph testers. So I did a natural show. Mm. But no 18-year-old should be, th- you shouldn't be getting into bodybuilding first year and start talking about steroids. You want to mention that word maybe after four years of training, five years of training, minimum. Okay. And um, you mean at then at the age of like 23, 24? Yeah. Well, I guess there's no good age to essentially create a dependency for your body, but yeah. everything in life is risk reward. So I say, you know, when would I say steroid use is necessary? I'd say, well, I mean, in my case, I'll defend my case for everyone so they can Mm. get a good idea. I make my entire living from Mm. bodybuilding Mm. uh, based upon how I look. Mm -hmm. So the risk to reward for me is that if I take anabolics, Mm. yes, they're not good for my health, but I can try and mitigate that with, you know, quarterly blood tests. We were talking about giving blood earlier. But the reward for me is a life that, you know, I never thought I'd have. So that's fine for me. But when you're, I think, 18, 19, 20, and and it's just, you know, I'll try that bodybuilding or I'm going to Ibiza or I'm going to Zante. Mm. I mean, a good example is I'm going on holiday at 19. Guys take a bunch of Hanovar. They completely stop the natural production of testosterone and they're in for a good six months of, of, of a terrible life. Right. And then they're in then. They've made the mistake. Yeah. So again, I just say to somebody, they go to me, when should I use steroids? I say, well, come back to me once you train four years. That is my general, even if you're 24, 25, I say, go and train for four years. Train naturally. Train and naturally. Then, and then start. Most people, from what I know, most people are, they have no idea what they are actually capable of. Mm-hmm. Because especially in today's society, everybody wants it yesterday. Mm. Nobody really wants to work for anything. Mm. Build a muscle, getting in fantastic shape takes time and effort and a lot of sacrifice. Yes. So these kids are coming in, they're seeing 
the the magazines, they're seeing what they could be like, and they're like, well, why the fuck am I waiting? Mm. Let, let's get it on now. Mm. But the problem is when you are that young, even at 18, you're still developing. You're still developing uh, hormonally. You're still developing physically, emotionally, mentally. Everything, you 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 may think that you're a man, but you're fucking not. No. You're not. So then you throw in a load of exogenous hormones and you're in, like Ty said, you're in for a very rough ride mm. because once you're in, it's very difficult to get out. One of the things that I've thought with it, uh, I have a similar philosophy as in, as in psychology, which is like if somebody has depression or anxiety and they want to take... They say to me, "Should I take pharmaceuticals as a solution?" I'm like, well, first of all, we don't we don't actually know how effective it is. We don't know what the side effects are. It's still very much being researched, and people will tell you it's safe, but it, it isn't. We've, we've actually discussed this here in the podcast yeah. before. Why don't you do everything else before the medicine? See how far you can go. Yeah. Surprise yourself, and particularly with the steroids, there's this thing in my head. I have this little visual image of like a ceiling, and I'm like, "You've now gone to the ceiling." What? Where are you going to, if you're at 21 mm -hmm. and you've been blasting heavy combinations that a 45 year old after 20 years of training would take, where'd you, where are you going to go? Mm. What, you're going to double it? Are you going to triple it? Yeah. Cause and, certain... and that's, that's what happens. Okay. You get the whole more, uh, it's, it's like a bodybuilding thing, isn't it? You get the whole more is better. That's when you, you hear about these absolutely ludicrous doses that some of these people are taking now. So, okay. So we've established it doesn't make sense to do it at that level when you're very young. Now, the state of bodybuilding today, I want to talk about two things, and 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 you said something, Tyler, and I think it's good. Let's try and keep things as clear as possible. There's the state of actual competitive bodybuilding, and then there's the state of general gym, gym culture, yep. right? I've heard it, not just from you guys, but from other pro bodybuilders. I'm going to have Amp Bales on next That'll week. That'll be a good podcast. That'll be a good podcast. Mm -hmm. And um, he's saying that just the culture shifted now where people have just started dosing up more and more. I don't follow bodybuilding. I know some bodybuilders yeah. will, will say publicly, I'm on this, I'm on that, I'm on mm -hmm. the other. How much has it gone up in the last 20 years then? Well, like in terms of dosage. If you put it this way, I, I competed as a natural bodybuilder. People can go find my photographs. Um, I was never introduced to steroids. All my friends were natural bodybuilders. Mm. And, you know, I did very well. I looked very good. And obviously that catapulted me to then take anabolics. Mm. I took anabolics, looked very good, looked very well. So I have me following and all this, but... For me, this is the interesting thing. I hit a wall where I started talking to pros. I know pros and to mm. pro. I know pros. And we started talking about what I needed to do next to make an impact on the stage. Mm. And what I had to do next, I have absolutely no desire in doing. It's got that crazy. To me, it's just to me. Yeah. Where we're talking now. You mean the standard wisdom that would be issued to you as a young man as yeah. to this is what you must do next, my son. The barrier for being a pro now, let's is, say, for example. Yeah is you need to take insulin. You need to take human growth hormone. You need to be on three, four grams a week. And if anyone wants an example, I'm honest as I can be, I've never mm. took more than a gram of anabolics. Of, of anabolics. Grams yeah. being like testosterone will come in 300 milligram and I've never took a gram total. So you're saying like they're on a thousand mil of something. Oh, bodybuilders are on four or five grams. I'm sorry. Week, per, four or five grams. Per, I would per compound. I, I, a I, gram I, per compound. I've, I've kind of distanced wait, wait. myself from it. <laughs> But that's I that's know. the that's the yeah. level that you're talking. You're now. probably no, no, thinking no, no, it's no, phenomenal. No, 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 no. I'm not good at maths. Your wait. So I can get good gains at the age that I'm at, at 500. 500 is an amazing dose, right? 500 right. milligrams of testosterone probably puts you about 50 mL. So, so you're saying they double that? Thousand grams of test only, and then take thousand, other compounds mm. at a thousand. It's terrifying. Yeah, I've seen cycles that are two grams Deca. One gram test, one gram Primo, one gram trend. That's standard. Fuck. Seriously. Hell. No, and, and when I when I looked into this, this. Who's, who's doing that? Wait, we were talking about 24 year olds. I can name people. It's like, I know someone 24 who's took that and I can provide screenshots and everything. And it's not a screenshot in a sly way, by the way. They put he's, this he's, on a forum. Well, say, say and they name. Say, if he's cool with it. Yeah, I'm going I'm oh, to sure. avoid it. Okay, I am okay. sure. You don't want to name people. I just don't want to name people. Okay. It's on there if you want to uh, see it. That guy. He even more called plates, more dates or whatever. He, I Derek, think, for more Derek, plates, yeah. more Derek, he, he goes through yeah, name, he goes name through people the, yes. if people wanted to check yeah, it, yeah, right? Yeah. Dallas McCarver. Yeah, Dallas McCarver, for example, a pro bodybuilder who died at 26. Incredible bodybuilder, incredible talent. <laughs> I'm sorry for laughing, but you just <laughs> Mate, told me the numbers. And then 30 seconds later, you said died at 26. His heart mm -hmm. weighed 850 grams, which is double the average human heart. And his lungs were all, everything was enlarged. But what they found was they could reverse engineer, or they, at least they tried to reverse engineer the blood volume in him. They thought he was on 10 grams. I don't know, but that's the rumor, 10 grams of anabolics. So where I'm on half. You're, on not, you're not even on a gram. You're not even on half a gram. So you're on 0.5. He was on 
10 grams. This, his cycles, supposed cycle has been published, hasn't it? Yeah, and which is it, reverse it, it engineering. It was like A4 sheets of stuff. It was like, what was I don't know how there's enough time in the day to, do, to, take to, that many to do what he was doing. So there. I guess if I could make it really simple, actually, yeah, the human yeah. body probably produces 20 and 30 milligrams of test a day. Yeah. Naturally. Yeah. So, you know, people on TRT tend to take 150 to 250 a week. Yeah. That means if you're on an anabolic steroid cycle, the most testosterone I've ever done, and people can get my pictures up if they'd like to look at what I look like, yes. was 600 milligrams of test. Could you could you pull up Tyler, uh, Tyler Cook, please? Just a random shot of me or a video or something. You can see my transformation and I can tell you I was on 600 milligrams of test. Okay, and 400 milligrams of trend, but that was enough for me to look how I look there. And 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 you're, uh, you were 24 at this age. Yes, I mean- Look at the guy right there. Yeah, look you, at that. Look at the guy in the middle. He, that's natural, by the way, Look in the middle. That that's fully natural, no this steroids. Fully natural. 170 pounds ha on stage. Jesus Jeez. Christ. How many years have you been training? Since I was 16. So 18 and a half years old. I was a pretty, I was pretty, you know, good, you know. I'm yeah, pretty proud of that. So Yeah, you must have been because, yeah, there's some real But that's natural. There. So there's a lot of kids. By the way, the whole 18-year-old thing, no 18-year-old asks me should they take steroids because they know I'd tell them to shut up. Yeah. They ask idiots. Okay. That's the issue here. Some People plonker at the pushing Because no bodybuilder would ever... Right. Tell an eighteen-year-old to take steroids ever. Can we get a picture of you? But if you, you go and look at me on the on the uh, the old juice, <laughs> and that's uh, and this is uh, five hundred. This is six. Yeah, this is six hundred tests. Six hundred tests. Four hundred trembolone. How many weeks of? Uh, are you, uh, I'm twenty four here. I think twenty two. Jesus, I am twenty two. Um, yeah. And you've been on that cycle for? I've been on anabolic since I was at least 20. But on, for this particular cycle, if you're saying 600 tests? 600 tests, 600 trends, 15 weeks. Yeah. 15 weeks, something yeah, like 400 that. 400 600 tests. So, so my point is, that's that's what that is. That's yeah, a gram. That's mm -hmm. one There's gram. There's boys taking five. I can't do that. I wouldn't do the injections. It was It's too much, man. Like, so how many injections a day are we talking about? One a day, about? some people. With uh, That's what I mean. I can't do that. So this kid's taking five times that. Yeah. At 24. You would believe, or if you were kind of to th look at it rationally, be like, well, if they're taking five times the amount of gear, they should be five times better. Th they're nowhere near that. Yeah. So can you give me, would you give me a name of somebody we can look at who's who's young? Oh, oh sorry. What was the Do name of the guy who died? Dallas McCarver. Dallas McCarver was enormous. Dallas McCarver, they, they don't know what he was on, but he was 26 when he died and a great it, bodybuilder it potential. But, uh, yeah, he was, he's an he, example of Dallas is another bodybuilder called Boston Lloyd, who's yeah. also dead, by the way. They both had the same coach and they said, Boston Lloyd said, I just can't do what that guy's doing. I can't keep the food down. I can't do it. Mm -hmm. So he's on a huge amount of calories going through his body as well. <sighs> oh, ridiculous amounts. I would never give my life for bodybuilding and Dallas, fair play to him, said, I, they don't care, these guys. These guys say I will die for it. And yeah. sadly, that's the well, they Well, they, they did um, like a, a poll or a survey um, where they, they got... The, all the top, the top guys in bodybuilding. Mm. And they said, if we could give you a pill mm. and it would mean that you win the Mr. Olympia, mm. but you would be dead the week after, would you take the pill? And over half of them said, I'd take the fucking pill. Uh, yeah. From a mental health point of view, that's... What do you think about that? I, I just that's think, it, insane, I, think right? it's, I think it's really, really sad. I think it's, I'm, I'm, it's one of my concerns and the podcast wasn't meant to go. The, I mean, the overall podcast, the Richard Grannon and Friends, it was supposed to be just me interviewing whoever I thought was interesting, but it's developed this through through chatting to you guys. Other people at the gym were looking at body dysmorphia, morphia, eating disorders, using bodybuilding, using weight training, strength training as like a coping strategy. And I think that is absolutely fucking tragic because you are insane. And we're at the level of insanity of, sorry, this is this this will trigger some people. You know, when in the in the trans situation where they go, I feel like this. I want surgery to remove parts of my body, which for me is a hard boundary. I'd be like, yeah. you can have all the therapy you want, you can have anything you want, but I'm, I, I wouldn't. I'd ban it. I'd say we're not chopping you up because there are people out there who think they shouldn't have hands and they want to have their hands cut off, and we say no, we're not doing that. So why, you know? So yeah. that to me is at that same level of um, body body dysmorphia. Mm -hmm. If you're willing to die for yeah. what for recognition? Yeah, it's 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 yeah. it's absolute insanity. Yes. If you're at the top of the game, you might make a lot of money out of it. But these guys were willing, 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 <laughs> willing to die. Oh, I have on. a hard time. I've had to really reflect on myself. I've been on your podcast before, yeah. talked about my body dysmorphia. Yeah. Those pictures of me that you've seen, that was me at my best. But in reality, I was wearing two jumpers. I was answering the door with hoodies on. I wouldn't have yeah. me calves. I, I was terrified of anyone yeah. saying I was. Yeah. I, I had an argument with a bodybuilder once because a client of mine said his back was shit. Yeah. So he rang me. 
to say I want that lad's number. He said my back shit. I'm serious. <laughs> <laughs> that's nothing to get into a fucking we, scrap over we, is it? I'm I mean, sure no. we've touched on something like, similar to this before the second you pick up a weight yeah is the second you are not happy with the way you look for the rest of your life because you will always you, I know I, I that's struggled that's a strong statement from somebody who's making money from, from teaching people you will once you start to develop yourself yeah you'll never be happy once you've been super lean yeah. You will never feel lean ever. Yeah. Yeah. Ever. You, you will, you'll be like, oh God, I, I reckon right now I'm probably about 12, 14% body fat. Yeah. And in my head, I feel like I'm a lot, chub. I'm carrying a lot Chubbier. more chub than yeah. that because yeah. I've been down to fucking really, really lean. Could you go to uh, Danny Wilson's Instagram? You've done a really good job reinventing yourself, though, I think. That's why I called you an ex-bodybuilder, because you really have yeah, stepped away. 100%. I'm, I do, I'm, I'm on don't the even, way. My, but, there's pro, do you know what? There's probably nothing on my Instagram for a very long time. The side no. tricep's got to be there. That, oh, I know the shot, man. There, it's going to be there. There's, there's, there's shots of you very lean. There's a shot of your um, of your bum on there. I know that for sure. That, yeah. that, no, that's, that's in your inbox. <laughs> <laughs> can you, can you log into in my Instagram? your inbox. You know... It, it's it's worth saying bodybuilding is definitely took a turn because I got into this for Arnold Schwarzenegger, didn't I? And right. see, the thing is with Arnold back in the day, they didn't have no growth hormone, no insulin. I mean, growth hormone in the 80s was getting extracted from human cadavers, yeah. but they don't really know if bodybuilders were taking it because it was a risk of HIV. Right. So we can safely say Arnold and co, they didn't have Trembolone, didn't exist. They only had D-Ball, testosterone and Decker, really. And they looked amazing. You'll have to go back they looked amazing. quite a way, I reckon. So my philosophy now in my own training, I think I'm just going to stick to what the old school guys did. And, and it took a lot for me to say, I'm going to have to accept that I'm never going to be this this freak. But I just, even on the level of injections, I can't do it. What what what's uh, sort of uh, keep going? The, the, yeah, I, I don't think I've I haven't put anything up. Danny's lean. got his pants on. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't now. It's so normal to me that I'm like, yeah, cool. But I guess <laughs> I guess to most people, it's like these freaks. <laughs> yeah. See, the, I I've, I completely I've really distanced have. myself from bodybuilding that much that good job, man. You'd have to go. <laughs> there you oh, go. There we there's go. one. Your face doesn't even look like you. You no. look like another fella I know from Birmingham. There. Fucking hell, that's so weird. <laughs> That's not your face. Yeah, I know. Turns out it is because I was there. I can't believe you <laughs> shaved yourself bald. I know. For years, you know, Max. I know. When I seen your hair, I remember saying to Kieran, has Danny always said such nice hair? He's had, he's had hair transplant. I thought it, honestly, because you've yeah. all, you shaved yourself bald. Yeah. That was a picture of you. Oh, here it is. But yeah, on, on the left, the transformation looks crazy. That's, that, that, was, that's, that, was, that was in Pro Gym in Birkenhead, that. Oh, I've got, I've got a pick in that me. mirror. Yeah? I actually have a pick in that mirror. I've got a video in that mirror at 19 saying I'm giving up bodybuilding. Yeah. <laughs> so, so on the left, what would you have been on there? Uh, God, roughly, uh, uh, quite a lot. A good, a good dose. A good amount, yeah, yeah. A good amount, and that's why your head looks like that. Yeah, and it's you, mad. I thought I looked good, but you wouldn't. I mean, that that's not that's not overeating. That's water retention, isn't it? That's a bit of both. That's okay. that's being uh, in the bulking mindset, which okay. so many people are in. Yeah, you're on bulking. Well, you're not because you've never cut. I prefer yeah. to call it a bulking lifestyle. Bulking though. lifestyle. <laughs> Bulking, not sulking. <laughs> yeah, that was. Um, I don't even know when that was. That was. That's. Pr that's probably. <sighs> you look young. I don't even. I wouldn't that, even. That know. is Pro when we were on the door. Yeah, probably 15, 20 years ago, maybe. Yeah, yeah that's you what. Look that's... Like that. Yeah, you look yeah. like a doorman. Yeah. Max, man. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Stereotypical. That is a doorman start. Yeah. Stereotypical. Yeah. So what we were saying before we started rolling, as well, speaking of the old school, is. Uh, you were comparing what they would take back then in terms of quality yeah. as well. Your com what, who, who made the comment about Dorian Yates? Yeah. Was, it, was it you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what, what did you I put say? my hand up. I put, that was me. <laughs> me. I was going to pretend it was me then. It was me. <laughs> <laughs> I put my hand up. What, what, and what did you say about uh, Dorian? So Dorian Yates is very, he's very open and I, I would say honest about his gear usage when he was at his prime. Yeah. And the thing which people can't quite get their head around, especially given the insane doses that people are on now. Yeah. Back in the the eighties and the nineties, when when Dorian was was the king, there wasn't f underground labs. Underground labs are where someone gets a load of testosterone powder, gets a load of solvent, gets a load of oil, makes it themselves and sells it. Right. Then, because there's a profit involved the quality starts to come down. Like, when Dorian was taking it, it was pharmaceutical gear because steroids, if we look at the reality of it, 
they they are medicine. They are designed to treat deficiencies. They are designed to treat certain syndromes in human beings. That they, they have their, their their therapeutic use is in medicine. Obviously, bodybuilders got onto it and went, "Well, if I have three times that, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna have more." So the stuff that Dorian was taking, the stuff that the old school body, it was real stuff. So so what so what we're saying is nowadays the culture is take more and more in higher dosages, but lads are taking stuff that has a lower lower quality yes. as well. There's also the psychological impact of dosing. Um, weird one for you is, as you know, bodybuilders, and I don't know if you've had a bit of this, Rich, I know you definitely have done, it's like a dysmorphia, mm. where I guess you think if you go in one direction with something, your whole personality changes. So if you're on two grams of testosterone and you've set that level, yeah, yeah. and let's say you look okay on two grams, yeah. you're never going to want to go below that. No, nope. Just even psychologically. You mean two grams a week? Two grams a week, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're never going to want to go below that because you're going to think, well, if I go to 15, I'm like, nah, there's no way I can go to 1500 because yeah. I know I'm going to lose a bit of size. Yeah. I, can't I, won't, I, won't, I won't be big Danny anymore. Yeah. So you'll be brushing your teeth in the mirror going, your delts have melted yeah. away. Your that's genuine slag. bodybuilding. Who are you? It's 100%. Um, that's why I said once you, once you start training, you'll never be happy with the way you look. Right. Yeah. It's easy to bash it, of course, because, I mean, I've said this before openly, most sportsmen take steroids. Boxers, Olympians, they're all <gasps> smashing it. Don't be ridiculous, They're all Tyler. smashing it. You're going to be telling us actors take it oh and everyone's God. taking it now. Tyler, how could on. you, sir? Oh Ball, that Baldwin God. guy, he was on trend. That's what, that's what did it. <laughs> 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 um, it wasn't a gun, it was a hammer. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, they all take it and it's not because they're bad people because obviously I'm not here to bash bodybuilding. No. It's the, the problem with bodybuilding is bodybuilders are really good people. They're very focused individuals who obviously have a goal and they're willing to make the sacrifice and the reward's enough for them. Mm. The problem for me is the gray area, as yeah. we've said. It's yeah. the people in the middle. Yeah, uh, I think there's a statistic that 80% of men who go through a gym door will take steroids at one point in their life. So you uh, go sorry, in- how many? What percent? 80%. So if you go, the amount of people, obviously I, as, a, as a coach and I have been for 10 years, the amount of men mm. that I've coached in group training facilities that are totally normal looking guys, mm. office workers that went, oh, you know what, mate, back in the day, they may put me on Sus and Decker and I'm like, what the What's going, mm. How did that happen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, I haven't felt good since. And I've had to sort after them and, and, and look at those things and re-stimulate their own body's testosterone production. But the thing is, like, that's the problem, the gray area, where mm. people just don't... Because if, if 80% of men try t testosterone in a gym, mm. why do one in 10 look like a bodybuilder? Right. There's no need for no. it. Yeah. You know, uh, I've got friends that were on... I know the, the dosage thing's really hard for people watching at home who don't understand bodybuilding. But I've got friends who took the five grams, who tried it and went, okay, let's find out what the ceiling is on these things. Let's really see what happens if I take as much steroids as my body can fit in it. And they're not afraid. Like I would be, I'd be scared. No, they're not afraid, man. But my my friend literally, he's very honest about it. He, he He's done the five grams and then he went down to one and a half and he's just as big and just as good. Really? So he realized. So that was another thing I was going to ask you is, uh, as with any drug that you take, I mean, if it's recreational drugs or, or whatever, there must be a point of diminished returns. Minimum effective dose. Oh, 100% there is, yeah. yeah. Of course what, there is. What's it called? A minimum Minimum effect effective dose is what you want in life, isn't it? Yeah, oh, I see. You yes, want just yeah. enough you want to, to get the, the effect. Amount. You want to take right. the least amount for the maximal effect. So so, so some of these lads who do jump up to um, four or five grams a week, is some of that just coming back out with them? I would honestly think so, yes. It's just a waste. Yeah. Because it's well agreed upon that it's a waste. We're still... I was chatting to Ant about this a couple of weeks ago and he very patiently and kindly sat and listened to me ramble on about bodybuilding when he's a fucking pro. Yeah, a very like, good bodybuilder. Let me just tell you, Mr. Bales, what I, <laughs> what I think. I'd had too, too long on my own in Dubai and I gave him a call. <laughs> and I was like, well, because you still, you're still, it's still trauma and healing. It's mm -hmm. just like psychology. It's yeah, trauma, yeah. healing, trauma, healing, trauma, healing. So actually bodybuilders are very good healers from that point of view self-healing, but there's only a certain speed that your body can, re it's all metabolism. Mm -hmm. You're still metabolized. You're still turning food and external calories and e external steroids into muscle. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a drug that exists that uh, makes it literally time no. faster? Because muscles are at the simplest level. You got to imagine that muscle can only be built. Let's say, let's say I, you can't put a number on it because it's impossible, but let's say the most muscle you can physically build is a pound a week. Right. That's a that's very generous. But let's say you could. Yeah. You can go and take five grams or one gram, you'll build a pound. So it's a time-based problem that people don't understand. Mm -hmm. They don't realize that it's not about how much more you take. Because like we said, it's wasted. It's how long you're in the game. Yes. Bodybuilding's a simple process of going in, creating a muscle tear, coming out, letting it recover and grow bigger. But your yeah. body can only do so much of that. Yes. The testosterone doesn't and help. That's the bit which people refuse to do. They yep. like going into the gym and smashing themselves to death. But then when you say to them, right, you need to go to bed early tonight. Nah. Yeah. Or I'll do this for 10 years. They go, yeah. 
10 years? Yeah. What have no. I got to do for 10 years? No, 10 years, no. Because the fastest you can possibly grow is that I made it up with that one pound a week. Mm. Muscle's probably like a gram a week. But like, if you could gain a pound a week, that's the max, whether you take five grams or one. Now, the way steroids are meant to work is you base it on like milligrams per kilogram, really. Mm. And the idea is that the bigger you get, the more you're going to need to then develop to the next level. Okay. My, my mate Matt often does a, a great talk on it called the anabolic elevator theory. And it's basically like, I'm on a butcher it, but you're at the ground floor in a mm. hotel. Mm. And you know, that lift, no matter what you do, is mm. going to take you to a floor above. That's it. It's not mm. going to take you to the third or fourth. It's yeah. going to only take you one above. And the button is all about how much you can put as much steroids in that button as much as you want. It's mm. only going to take you to the first floor. Yeah. So all you want to do in that, in that press is apply as much testosterone as you need to get to the next floor. But what people will do, six grams, you're only on floor one. Six grams, you're only on floor two. It, mm -hmm. You're only going to ever develop a floor at a time. So then so then, what I we're like saying that. is like, this is, um, it's not just that it's fucking dangerous and it's tragic because people are throwing their lives away for, I don't know, fame or, or recognition or something. Yeah. It's that it actually doesn't even work. It doesn't like work. That. No, that's the funniest bit about it. Um, obviously I'm genetically gifted in a sense. Mm. I've only really come to agree with that since I've got out of bodybuilding. When I didn't, I was like, I'm shit, I'm shit. But now I'm like, okay, now I can see why natural I was very good. I only needed so much to get somewhere. And then I could see my career progression. I'm like, yeah. okay, Tyler, well, now we will do two grams. Were you laughing at that wryly because you can recognize the insanity yeah. of that? The craziness of going, I'm shit at this. Yeah. When you're actually exceptional. 100%, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're insane. 100%, yeah, insane. totally. But that's the only way you're going to progress. And I've realized it's really hard for me to bodybuild again. Now my life's pretty good because it's really hard. Why, so, why would you want it? So if, life, yeah, if life is good, you don't want the well, torture of since bodybuilding. Since I've wore shorts and started wearing t-shirts and being mm. comfortable in my own skin, I've found it really difficult to get motivated to do insane things. Right. Because I'm not, I used to be terrified at the idea of having to get me, me, me kit off in the posing room in the back with the lads and they'll go, mm. you haven't progressed or you don't yeah. look good. Or mm. I was like, I have to be better. I have to be better. So I, I could justify the anabolic use then. Mm. But like I've said many times, I haven't took any serious anabolics in two years at this point. Because I'm waiting to, I want to, mm -hmm. I actively want to, I'm just waiting for the fire, but it's not, it's not came yet. <laughs> and you think that that could be because, well, mate, see, I did a video on this fucking years ago where I said, people were asking me about healing. And at the time, back in 2014, I had loads of musicians and um, people who worked as producers in the music industry. And I said, one of the things that might happen is if I actually help you to overcome your anxiety, your depression, your angst, your childhood trauma, is your creativity will go out the window. I think it's a fact, man. So as much as we, so we will bash steroids, we'll have a laugh about bodybuilding, but there is a more serious point here, which yeah. is that we accept that it takes a level of, you, you guys have lived yeah. it, a certain level of obsession to do it, but that obsession is probably unhealthy. Oh my God, yeah. I find it even hard to agree with you because my inner like body was like, nah, you can't agree with something like that. Because that is years, detrimental you'll be, you'll, to my- You'll be like me in a few years. I think I probably will because will. I've tried we'll be the whole- we running marathons together. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> I can't go that way. I'm not going to go that late. I would not accept it. Uh, no, but it's like, I just, I just love Arnold and the old school bodybuilders and that was mm -hmm. my fascination. Mm. And I mean, the, the modern day Mr. Olympias, as much as they're great people and all that, it, I've got friends that are in bodybuilding and they just say it's about now- who can just do the most, like who the freak show, basically, mm -hmm. who can be the maddest creature right. on the stage? It's yeah. not about what it used to be. Well, some of the, they say, don't they, some of the top coaches, they're more like pharmacists than coaches. Yeah. It's not about, right, I want you to have 150 grams of rice today. Do you, do you know, do you know that's there in MMA as well? Mm -hmm. One oh, of yeah. the first MMA coaches I had who was going to take me through an amateur to a, to amateur fights to a pro fighting. We sat down for the first thing. We had uh, 12 weeks of fight prep. And um, I thought it was going to be like a list of like, we'll do sparring this day, then we'll do grappling this day, then we'll do what? It was a fucking list of steroids. Mm. First, yeah. I was like, I was 27. That's, I was like, what the that's, fuck are you talking that's about? That's where competitive sports are. That's, that's, it's who, who is the, who has the best pharmaceutical knowledge. That's all it is. That's all it breaks my heart about mm. bodybuilding is we're honest. Everyone goes, bodybuilders are steroid users. We're idiots, of course, but mm. at least we're honest idiots. Do you remember when Boston Lloyd first came out and he was... He he changed. He did. And he's dead the, and I can't believe that. No. I cannot believe that. Well, he come out and was literally like, steroids aren't really that bad and was just doing. Yeah. I mean, you can Google this guy. He was yeah. taking more Pint. than anybody else. And he's dead. But and but he was the first guy that I remember that came out and said exactly what I've just said then about who's the best pharmaceutical yeah. knowledge. Because up, up until him, all your top bodybuilding coaches, it was all like, oh, this diet and that diet. But Boston Lloyd came out and he went, actually, you can fuck off. It's absolutely nothing to do with that. It's 
who who is who has the best knowledge mm. around pharmaceuticals and everyone was like oh get lost boston fucking rather than that. but then yeah. the more he spoke the more sense he made yes he took absolutely goliath doses yeah. and was like openly doing it on his youtube videos his social media he was going through his cycles he was injecting on camera and he didn't even look that good that. for the record no you can get his transformation up on youtube what, what's his name boston boston, boston lloyd he does uh, a transformation you, you look at boston is it six lloyd? months or 12 weeks it, with insane yeah. juice shoes and he still yeah. looks he doesn't look that good but on he's a, actually on a huge amount of, of juice huge, huge, his huge, his before huge, and after is ridiculous huge. But like, he's got synthol in both biceps. Oh, uh, what? Yeah, this is what I don't like. And this is why I'm kind of pulling back from body. I don't like synthol. Both them biceps are synthol to the max. So it just explains to people who don't know what, what synthol it's is. It's not real muscle, it's oil. And they put it in to inflate the side. There's the transformation there. If you scroll down just a little bit, Jacob, that one, see it? Down a little bit. He's the front latch spread. There. That one, he did that. That is his before and after in like six, six months, months, I think. With, with, with huge every tools. single thing that you can take. Like, uh, he, no one pints, had ever done that before. Pints. It was yeah. like, oh my God, everyone in the gym was like, seen that Boston Lloyd like kid? Yeah. Mm. No, what is he? Look at that. But everyone like, used to say, the fuck? he's going to be dead. And everyone's like, yeah, whatever. Mm. And he is dead. And then it Liver failure, turns I think, out kidney he, failure. He, well, his insides just went to fucking what, mush, didn't What they? age did he die? 29. Mm. So, so I actually, well, Danny always sends me, uh, whenever anybody in, who's mm. the same age as us dies, any yeah. bodybuilder, he sends it to yeah. me. Look, Look, there's another one. There's another one. Yeah. Come on. Let's go for a run. <laughs> it's true, man. And it's sad. Let's have a green juice. It's quick. sad. Um, obviously, you know, bodybuilding, like I was saying before, the athlete side of it, like other athletes and sportsmen, I think growth hormone's undetectable. So every athlete in the world's on growth hormone mm. as a standard. Mm. 100%. Insulin is the most anabolic human hormone, more so mm. than testosterone. They're probably all on that as well. It's mm. undetectable. Yeah. It's in and out of the system in, I don't know how many, what the half-life is. That's why you get these um, Premier League football players that can that are in the 30s. And for and the early forties can keep up with kids who are like nineteen. Because like, they're on. Hmm, why wouldn't you be? Gross. And Cristiano and Ronaldo. You he not, didn't like Captain America. Yeah, you couldn't tell Cristiano Ronaldo not to take growth hormone. The guy's a champion from birth. He's yeah. like, of course he's going to take it. Yeah. Everyone else is on it, Cristiano. Okay, you know, we're going. You know, how how many uh, in their how many bodybuilders, pro bodybuilders, you're aware of who've died in their twenties from from this? I mean, you've mentioned that's, that's only a recent, quite a recent thing, thing. Yeah. It's so, quite recent. Okay, so, so last, last two decades, I'd probably say. Mm -hmm. So when we're looking at like um, some actual uh, uh, data for saying people are taking too much, yeah. it's not working and it's killing them, more have died in the last two decades than in the previous two I'd like to before. think so. I'd, I would say so. I'd stand by that myself yeah. as well. Somebody Especially needs, in the last 10 years. In the last 10 years, there's been a lot of people in their 20s dying. Yeah. I know, when did that guy, what was his name? I want to call him Zizek. But that's the Ziz. one you want to call the him. Ziz. You want to call him Ziz one? died. Zizek. I thought you said something else. Then. Really? I want to call him. Ziz was an icon, wasn't he? <laughs> he was. And Ziz probably started the whole movement of let's go to cream fields and get leathered and get up on the trend, didn't he? Really? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what he did. He was a stripper. Oh, was he? He was an Australian stripper who loved the party scene. He can really dance mm. and he's a cool guy and he's very charismatic, mm. but he was a nerd who played RuneScape. Mm. So he was at the first kind of, Okay, I'm a nerd. You, you can, this video is a great thing. He's a little nerd. And the next thing, him and his brother start training. Mm. And then he's this jacked guy with loads of confidence. But his problem, I think, was like he loved ecstasy and, and all these yeah. cocaine. And he did that with anabolic steroids, which probably isn't wise. So it wasn't necessarily the roids that killed him. He had a heart attack in a sauna in Thailand yeah, yeah, yeah. at 22, I think. Well, if you're going to go. If you're going to go. Go in a sauna in Thailand. And I think, uh, <laughs> I remember read i think i might have even been in thailand when he when he died i wonder if it was 2010 something like that i know we went around that time he was using um a lot of ephedrine as well yes yeah, the ephedrine now is class a whereas it wasn't back then was it right um because right. ephedrine's killed people like yeah it's got to have killed now. people yeah. the thing is with steroids is they they're going to make your heart your heart's a muscle so you're anabolic with testosterone so when your heart gets worked out quite a lot, it's going to grow. And this mm -hmm. is why, again, I try and back real bodybuilders here. Real bodybuilders get ECGs at least, you know, mm -hmm. maybe twice a year once. Mm -hmm. I've had ECGs recently. Heart's completely fine, no hypertrophy at all. Okay. Um, so that's the stuff kids aren't being made aware of. But people like Ziz, they're taking drugs that get the heart rate going whilst mm. being on an anabolic hormone. Yeah. So you're basically training your heart yeah. to grow. Jesus. That's why you can't mix cocaine and, and steroids. It's not a good idea. Oh. Choose your poison. Oh, shit. <laughs> Which you told me that 15 yeah. years ago. <laughs> and seven murders ago, Danny. Yeah. I mean, people get away with it, man. I mean, I just, yeah. <laughs> we might me. not. <laughs> You've done well enough. You're doing better than that. You're doing if better than that. If that housing estate gets built, <laughs> fucked. <laughs> Got to move those bodies yeah. again, Dan. Um, what, what is, what, what would be your, uh, there's a few things I want to ask you about today. 
What would be your advice to young men in their twenties who are thinking about starting a cycle? What What would uh, me? Uh, yeah, I, would you... knowing what I know now, mm. I'd say st- to fucking steer clear altogether. Altogether, knowing what I know now. Okay, so there's a lad in his twenties and he wants to look good and he wants to get a little bit jacked and and look nice on the beach. What would you What would you tell him to? You'd say, don't take steroids. I'd mate. say steer fucking clear. And what would you tell him to do instead? I would tell him, in all honesty. If I had to, if I had to do, if I had to go back and do it again, mm. I wouldn't even do bodybuilding. Knowing what I know now, I would do. Um, so I would do. I I do CrossFit. He's, he's close to you, and he does fucking Muay I do Thai. CrossFit. <laughs> so you fucking watch yourself. I would. I, I if I had to go back now, I'd do more of a CrossFit style. Training. I reckon me and you can take him. Oh man, yeah, let's go. <laughs> I reckon it'd be. He'll start kipping. I reckon it'd be great viewing. <laughs> I would. He's better I, than us, Richard. We've got to be fast. I, I, well, I wouldn't kip. I'd probably rip, rip me back. I, I think you've got a good answer though, man. Mm. I'd like to I like to see you don't regret your decision. Mm. So I for me, I struggle sometimes. 100% mate. Yeah. So you would you would say just like a CrossFit, more athletics, yeah. gymnastics, yeah. kettlebells, yeah. That's what cardio, I, yeah. keep it moving. Sleep more, eat better, train differently. And don't piss around and with don't your piss around. system. No. Wow. No. What what would you say, Tyler? Well, I think for me, um, as having a full ECG, full health check last year with blood lab, cancer screen, everything. I'm in great health. I'm a bit heavy, but we're solving that. But I'm in great health, so I, I would never regret what I've done because it's built my entire business. Like I worked at Asda when I left school, so for me, the risk to reward mm. is like well, it's given me an entire life that I never thought I'd have. Mm. And I can't really give steroids the credit because I was a good natural bodybuilder. Mm. But honestly, if a 20 year old come to me and said, "Can I do steroids?" which does happen quite a lot, mm. I tell them, "How long have you trained?" And they say, oh, you know, it depends on the answer, but they usually say, I'm not long. And I go, okay, well, what's your training program? They go, well, I haven't really got one. I said, well, what's your diet? Oh, well, I haven't thought about that much. Mm. Are you sleeping? Yeah. Well, uh, we well, don't think about steroids. Mm-hmm. You know, if someone come to me, a very different kind of young man, like maybe I was when I was 20, cause I do justify my use. Mm. And he'd won natural bodybuilding shows. He mm. trained for four years. Yeah. He had a very good understanding of training, very mm. good understanding of nutrition. And he's like, listen, I want to make an impact in in the bodybuilding scene and that's just what I want to do and that's how I want to spend my life. I'd say yeah, exactly. we can talk, yeah. So what you've just said then, it, it would be very situation dependent. Yeah. If a kid comes to me and says, look, I'm going to IP for in a few weeks, what do you think I should do? Mm. I'd say, I have a fucking great time. Yeah. <laughs> if a kid comes to me, well, to be honest, if a kid comes to me and I want to be a competitive bodybuilder, I'd say, here's Tyler's number. Yeah. Because that, I'm complete, that's, yeah. I've completely washed my hands of that. You're not so, touching it now. It would be very, very person dependent. The majority of people, though, these days, they don't want to be competitive bodybuilders. Mm-hmm. They just want to look sound in a t-shirt, lad. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm not trying to justify bodybuilding because I, I have no. I speak to bodybuilders. I obviously have mates who are bodybuilders, but I would never compete. I just it's not it's not my thing. But I wonder is there is there a potential change in the culture where you say, um, yeah, we're going to do bodybuilding, but you're not going to be some bubble gutted freak you're going to try and do it the way like Dorian Yates did it or Arnold did it. You're going to do a different aesthetic with a, a dosage that reflects a different um, ethos. Mm-hmm. Well, they do have that now. And it's the most popular class by a mile. It's What's called it? Classic Physique. Okay. Have you heard of Chris Bumstead? Oh yeah, I have. He yeah. is the champion of Classic Physique. He's not Mr. Olympia for bodybuilders. He's the bodybuilding champion for Classic. Oh. Now Classic is the most, here's an example. Bodybuilding is very niche and underground. Nobody liked us. Nobody should. We're all idiots. Mm-hmm. But, Originally, we only had bodybuilding. Mm. Now, in 2012, Danny, I want to mm. say they created a category called Men's Physique, mm. where you wore shorts on stage, and it okay. was all about looking good on a beach. Okay. Yeah. Rocketed. The industry absolutely tripled overnight. Yeah. Shows were stacked. You were getting 40 competitors on a stage because the, the barrier of entry was pretty low. Right. You, you could jump in that, and that was booming. And then they said, wow, this is so popular. Last five years, I think they said, okay, well, let's make a, exactly what you just asked for. Uh, let's take the freaks away and all the bubble guts and all yeah. the crazy issues. Yeah, yeah. And let's put it on a weight limit. Yeah. And they got Chris Bumstead. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So they don't, I don't know. I mean, Chris Bumstead's still smashing it. Yeah. But they have a weight limit now. And I do believe one of the big problems with anabolics, whether people want to say they're bad for your health or not, I think one of the big problems is being heavy. You know, off season, I can be easily 260 pounds or five foot nine. Uh, Mr. Olympia, I mean, big Rammies, 330 in the off season, pounds, like 23 stone, competes at like 20 stone. And what's phenomenal? What, what height is he? He's like 5'10. Uh, so yeah. even if he didn't take any steroids, that's bad for you anyway. Yeah. But whereas Chris Bumstead, I mean, he's six foot one and he weighs 230 on stage, very Arnold esque and doesn't yeah, get much fat in the off season. Yeah. Very, very Arnold. So that's he? very popular, by the way, and people agree with you 100%. So um, actually, we've discussed this uh, a number of times. 
Um, I'm going to ask you both of this, Dan, but Danny, I'll start with you. What, what's wrong with me being heavy? Just heavy. doesn't matter whether I'm fat, muscular, whatever. Because in the olden days, we'd be like, ah, you're not accounting for muscle over yeah, fat in the yeah, BMI. Yeah. Why is it still a problem if I'm super ripped, but heavy as fuck? So this is kind of going down the whole BMI route. Mm. So you will get bodybuilders. I've said it. You've said it. You've 100% fucking said it. <laughs> BMI. I'm just justifying being fat. I love B- it. B- BMI <laughs> is bullshit because it doesn't take into account muscle mass. Yeah. True. It doesn't take into account muscle mass. However, BMI is nothing to do with body fat. Mm. It's to do with your mass. It's to do with your weight mm. and how much pressure mm. that is putting on your cardiorespiratory system, how much pressure that's putting on your central nervous system. If you are really heavy, fat or muscle, mm. you are going to shorten your life. And that yep. is uh, not just for the human animal. Other animals, they've done this experimentation, haven't they? If it's rats, if it's monkeys, if it's anything, he- uh, an animal that is much heavier than its genetic predetermined mm-hmm. destination, they just die. Yeah. They yeah. just die younger. Yeah. My mate explained it to me and he said, if you've got a house with a, a three bedroomed house with a boiler, mm. The boiler is designed to work six six radiators. Mm. If you then put a big extension on that house and put three or four more radiators in there using the same boiler, the boiler being your heart, mm. the boiler's got to work that little bit harder mm. to get fluid around the house, blood around the body, mm. which means that it's going to wear out really, really quickly. And that's where the problem lies. You don't You don't see anybody who's 17, 18 stone at 70 years old. No, there's a reason for that. Yeah. Tyler. Danny's exactly right. I think that is the underlying issue. A lot of people go, oh, juice heads, bodybuilders. Mm -hmm. Being heavy is just bad for you. Whether people want to admit it or not. Again, it's it's slightly offensive to some people because even if you're not a bodybuilder and you're you're a big person, you're fat. Um, you're not going to live as long. Some people go, my, my, my dad was fat. He lived to 70. Well, your dad might have lived to 80 if he wasn't fat. Mm -hmm. Mm. Because it's simple math. You know, your heart is a muscle. It has so many beats. It has so much potential. But... The heavier you are, the bigger strain you've got. Mm-hmm. Your skeleton, again, mm-hmm. can only hold so much strain. Yeah. Your joints can only yeah. hold so much strain. So just being heavier is just bad. It is just bad. But steroids, this is the thing. If you're natural, you can never really get heavy enough to be at detriment to your body if you're an athlete. Mm. That's the interesting thing. Your body has a very good way of self-regulating itself. Mm-hmm. If you don't take steroids, your natural level, you'll never get to a point where being heavy and muscular will ever be a problem. It will never be a problem. But if you're a steroid user, mm. your muscle mass obviously then becomes above and beyond what yeah. a normal man can have. And that's where you get the bodybuilder problem, which is where you get guys like me who are 230 at five foot nine, when without steroids, I'd probably be 190, 180. Mm. I couldn't get any higher than that. Your body wouldn't let you. Mm-hmm. It's almost like we're saying, fuck you, body. I yeah. know better than you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to put more muscle on you yeah. and I'm going to pay the price. And people hate it. People don't like it when you say that. People yeah. hate it. Yeah, but you know it's it's muscle. Yeah, it is. It is muscle. Very expensive That's metabolically. Absolutely. Mm. absolutely, and people people hate it. Digestion people, as well. As soon as you question someone's health, as soon as you say, "Well, do you know that all this stuff that you think you're doing is dead sound?" Mm. It's actually it's shortening your lifespan. Yeah, but uh, the BMI it's uh, rubbish because it doesn't uh, you know take into and then they just tag their mate or something on. Yeah, I don't think uh, you you know more than this than me. You I don't know what I'm talking about. I'll tag you in it to so kind of back their argument up. People hate it when you tell them that. Well, is it? I suppose there's a really common sense way of thinking about this for people who struggle with this and they've got their beliefs like locked in, like being really mus- muscular is healthy, the mm-hmm. end. Uh, what is it? Healthy at any size. It doesn't matter how much body fat I'm carrying. I'm healthy. I'm beautiful. Yeah, we don't agree with that, do we? The other, the other oh, people, a couple of people that I've interviewed in here is, is military and they'll complain that some of the hardest things that they do in the military is... Um, Yomping for the Marines, tabbing for the army. What did you call it in RAF? Same thing. Same thing, tabbing yeah, yeah, tabbing or a yomp. Um, with, with the gear on. Mm-hmm. Because maybe everybody should do that as an mm-hmm. experiment. Like put on 10 kilos, 20 yeah. kilos and do a walk, your yeah. normal walk that yeah. you do with your dog and find that you're actually out of fucking breath. Yeah. And that was a, for, it's not a form of torture in, in the military, but they've got to prep you for that. It's, it's fucking uh, hard, right? Yeah, it's not torture. It's, it's a way of... Um, I was going to say sorting the men from the boys, but you probably can't say that anymore. You can on my podcast, so my it's, dear. it's a way of weeding people out. The weak. Yeah. Are you saying that some people what? are oh. weak? Some are, not us. Jacob, they experience an illness called weakness. <laughs> 
No, you certainly wouldn't. Look at the size of Jacob's hands. He likes rock climbing. Shows your hands. Oh, my God. Beast. It's like a cartoon character. You know when he shakes your hand when you come in and you're like, terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is it the mask who has them big, big shoes? The mask is just yeah, like yeah. that. He's got yeah. these. He's doing pull-ups with his little fingers. And... <laughs> so um, the, 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 that was one of the things I was going to say. It's like, that's an easy way to have that argument is just go, okay, put, put a pack on then. Go and do your half an hour walk with your dog. Yeah. With, the 10, with the 10, 20 kit. you will be like, oh well, shit. This what is happens to hard. paratroopers? What's wrong with them? The knees are all knees, jacked up. Yeah, knees. What happens to plasterers? Yeah. Your shoulders are all jacked up. Mm. And I say this to people about bodybuilding, they go, how can you justify steroid use, Tyler? I'm like, well, because it pays, it doesn't pay my bills, but in, mm. in a way for mm. me to be relevant in my industry and do what I have to do, I have to do that. And I have chosen to. But it's in the same you know, way. Can I challenge that? Yes. Do you not think your charisma and intelligence would have? I don't think people are paying you for this for slab for yeah. like his fucking two kilos mm. of meat. That's on. probably true, but I guess to build my reputation in the early days and mm. and, and for the whole yeah, reason yeah, I yeah. have my following and the yeah. whole reason because I've got a huge outreach in America and the reason I am known is because of like well, because that guy that. has got a lot of muscle and a small waist. We like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what they said. Right. Uh, so I justify it that way, but I don't like I said I don't do much anymore. Mm. But. It's in the same way that a plasterer, I've met many at 50 who literally mm. can't lift their shoulder yeah. any higher. Mm. And they're like, no one says to them, you idiot, why, why'd yeah. you do that? Well, it's the living. You stupid plasterer. You stupid plasterer. As if you'd have seen that coming, your shoulders have been getting destroyed for years. <laughs> you, know, you stupid you Royal stupid Marine. You stupid plasterer. Yeah. Well, at my heaviest, I was 17 stone. Right now, I'm just under 14 stone. When I was 17 stone, my knees were fucked and my back was always fucked. The, the Americans will have no idea what 17 and 14 stone is. Uh, I like, don't know what that is. 200 pounds is 14 stone, so 17 is probably going to be around 230, 230, 230 something yeah. like mm -hmm. that. That was, so the difference then health-wise for me, mm -hmm. I couldn't walk upstairs. Without I'd be getting absolutely bollocks walking up the stairs. Yeah. With your big quads, walking around yeah. your quads. Yeah, I was, ch <laughs> I was chafing. And this is what's funny about bodybuilding, and I always say this, like, People go, oh, do you know what? I've just started that that trend and I'm out of breath all day. It's got to be a side effect. I'm like, but no, it's not the trend. And they yeah. go, it's got to be. I go, you're fucking 260, mate. Yeah. You know, yeah. you're 18 stone and five yeah. foot five. You're carrying another human it's on your shoulders. It's not trend. You're out of breath because you're, mm. you're fucking heavy. Yeah, mm. heavy People blame fuck. steroids for everything. In reality, yeah. it's, you know, it, it's, I mean, the, the big thing for me when you mentioned the the size thing, like what's bad about being heavy, mm. irrelevant to bodybuilding, digestion. There's been a bit of big correlation with people yeah. who live longer with eating less. Yeah. The reason is, all of your organs that process and, and, and organize food, they, they only have a finite amount of uses. Yeah. If I'm doing six meals a day, four or 5,000 calories, wouldn't be a, there be a version of Tyler that lives a lot longer that at 1,500 to 2,000? Mm -hmm. I'm using half the digestive capacity. 100%. Most people in the Western world eat for 15 hours a day. Yeah. They don't they don't give the digestive system enough time you to You look at the ancient human. And, and it's not how we eat. No. We hunted, we found, and we ate. And that, and that means we're not always prepared for regular meal every three hours. No. Your digestion barely gets, uh, as soon as no. it's chilled out as a bodybuilder, ramming mm -hmm. stuff back in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Same um, for people who aren't bodybuilders, by the yeah. way, people who are maybe overweight. Yeah, you just, start, you just the stacking food system. on top of food, on top yeah. of food, on top of food, because you can't process it. Which is all stress. Mm -hmm. Even good stress is still stress. Yeah, mm -hmm. stress is stress. So being overweight, not good, whether you're a bodybuilder or not. Mm -hmm. So eating all the time, being overweight, you said... Um, uh, in, in people, being overweight kills you sooner. In animals, also, yeah. if you're overweight, it kills you sooner. And eating more in animals as well. Other other mammals, which is all we are. We're just yeah. an animal machine, same as other mammals. It, it it definitely shortens life. There's no there's no question in the research that it shortens your life if you're eating more. I want to ask you, and and you don't you don't have to tell me. I'll I'll, I'll go first, right? So there's obviously <laughs> this me and you don't say anything. Get ready. No comments. So there has to be a level of, of, of obsession to drive you through what you two have put mm -hmm. yourselves through to compete. I never, I never had that. I've never picked up, you've both picked up bodybuilding magazines mm -hmm. and yeah. you've looked at other men competing and you know, there's different types and there's different styles and you must've had like your favorite people. Mm -hmm. You're like, I want to look like that. I want to yeah. look like that. I never had that, but I did for martial arts. I mm -hmm. did for MMA. The first five UFCs when they came out when I was 17, I had them on VHS. Yeah. And I watched them all. I made notes of the timings, what moves worked, what this is when people didn't even know how to do MMA. Yeah. They were like, <laughs> so somebody did a double leg takedown and they'd be like, what, what is the fuck? He's used a football tackle. On <laughs> and they were still they were still figuring it out. But I would dream that stuff. I yeah. was obsessed with with that. Mm -hmm. And I kind of I was thinking before, what saved me from this thing of like 
staring at my delts in the mirror and crying or like, yeah. you know, because I've lost size or whatever. And I think it was always, I did have a fantasy, but that wasn't my fantasy. Martial arts was the fantasy that would always pull yeah. me, pull me back out of it. So did you have, you must have had then fantasy, because I had fantasy fights. Like this is how I would want to win a fight. Mm -hmm. This would be so cool if I won like this. You must have had those moments where you're visualizing being on stage, right? Yeah, I think that's the problem because I, this so interesting you said that because obviously I've been doing the Muay Thai mm. uh, and, and some of the fighting stuff mm. and I've had so much fun because I didn't, I don't really give a shit. Like you just said, it I go in there, out, I learn it? a little bit, yeah. hit a few things and go home now. Yeah. Mm. I don't probably do what you may have done, but with bodybuilding, yeah. Right. In my head, I you didn't go, obsess with Muay Thai. No, with bodybuilding, I'm like, in my head, this is how I look because I've looked at Arnold so much. I look like this in the side chest, and then I mm. go and get a photo of that thing. Mm. And if I didn't look in that yeah. photo, how I looked in my head, the camera's broke. <laughs> I'd be like, what the fuck? You need a different camera. I so remember getting my lens is terrible. Yeah, I got the photos from my first show. They got sent over to me, and I went, this is shit. What a waste of time. Mm. And I won. I was like, this is shit. I look awful. My pecs are unsymmetrical. I used to have this obsession about one of my nipples like being odd to the other one. Right. I don't see it anymore. But back then I was convinced. I was flipping photos to see if it, like where Are they in alignment? I mean, Man. <laughs> why are you laughing? <laughs> Just no laugh. Why. It's worse if you cover it up. <laughs> is it Come on, Danny. <laughs> is it because he said nipple? <laughs> 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 That's how child. serious. I'm a fucking child. So bodybuilders are so funny because they act yeah. like I'm a, some oh. bodybuilders get aggressive and go, I'll see you on stage. We'll battle it out oh, on yeah. stage. Yeah. Come on, man. We're, yeah. in our, we're in our undies covered yeah. in tan. <laughs> we're in our undies covered in, in tan. Five owl fellas, by the way. Not, none of them ever really lifted thirsty. a weight. Yeah. And they're going to tell you which one's the best chocolate, yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I had to do to myself to take myself out of it. Because I used yeah. to get aggressive about it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show them the new me. I'm going to blow them away. I thought, yeah. who am I fucking blowing away? But, but and that's, that's that's the danger. What you've just said, then, you you literally, virtually fucking kill yourself for sixteen weeks. Mm. Fuck your family off. Just turn into a horrible person mm. to go and stand on stage to have six, seven, eight people go. You look shit, mate. Yeah, and that's it. Oh, and sorry, by the way, bodybuilders no never Thanks. lose. Like ask anybody, but they've never lost. No, no, they'll no. They'll always say. I come to there, but do you know yeah. what? The car bot was wrong. The coach was wrong. Or yeah. they'll say- I wasn't even going to bring that up. I was robbed. I was Awful. robbed. Mate. Awful. Every, no bodybuilder's ever lost. Like anyone in jail is yeah. innocent. Every bodybuilder's yeah. never actually lost. They've always been robbed. Yeah. It's corruption. Yeah. Then they, they start putting the comparison pitches up. This is the guy that won. But they'll get and them this on is a me. Oh, come on. It's horrible, man. Yeah, the industry's yeah, yeah. crazy. Yeah. To be told, uh, you, what, so you've, um, you've took loads of drugs. You've- come close to death. You've put yourself through pain for how many weeks? 16 weeks? Yeah, you look shit, mate. Oh, thanks. No problem. Is it this way? Great. No problem. As you just start crying, walking that, off fucking stage. The, the reason I wasn't going to uh, touch it today is because it, it, then it got, then we're into something a little bit deeper. That That's psychosis. Yeah, man. It's crazy. I know some beer. There's a, there's a drug in bodybuilding mm. called, it's not real, it's called Deludabol. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all fucking taking it. Honestly, Deludabol, mass doses. But it wouldn't take um, 16 weeks of restricted calories, massively increasing your testosterone levels, obsessing over pictures of, of, of bodies and then looking at yourself to induce psychosis. It would take about two weeks. Really? Yeah. I, you're the expert. Yeah, that's yeah. so interesting. It would, it, would only, it would only take two weeks. And then it's, it's, the, the, my inroad to this actually goes back to martial arts. It's a guy in uh, Portugal from uh, uh, 15 years ago and um, eventually... I, I never got to do, I was going to do an MMA uh, style DVD with him back when I used to sell DVDs. Lovely fella, good mates with my mum because she was always going into his bar and she was always, she was always chatting to him. And um, he eventually punched somebody in a fight. The guy falls down and dies. And then now he's in prison. Wow. Which is- It's that easy. It's that easy. We, all, that we easy. all know lads who've, we, we will all know at least one person yeah, yeah. who that's happened to or one step away from somebody who it's happened to. He explained to me when we, we were, I went in to a, a Portuguese place in Quatera where they had a cage and they had pictures of him on the wall when he was competing. And he did the, uh, oh, oh, it's fine. He, he wouldn't care. He was a model for Kawasaki. Oh, wow. Yeah, big, huge ripped black fella, bald, who would do the, and, and we're talking in the 90s. It's a long time. He's an older, much older guy. And I was saying to him like, fucking hell, the shape of you there, like what? innocently because yeah, I didn't know yeah. anything I was like what the fuck were you doing and he went into his life what he went through what it did to his wife what it did to his kids he was he's like I and he was traumatized he was like I saw a side of myself 
to do that, to compete, to get into this shape, to become a name in the industry in the 90s that I never want to see again. He was like, I'm oh. never, ever, I just do MMA now. I'll lift a weight for myself, but I'll never, ever do it again. And I started, that's what got me onto this thing of the psychosis. He'd induced psychosis in himself and changed himself as a person to, to a point where he'd started to become almost schizophrenic. If you look at the best bodybuilders, like Danny said, Dorian Yates, but if you mm. look at any of the best, by the way, mm. in terms of who's thought of the highest, mm. it's because they got out fast. Arnold probably competed till he was 31, never did it again. Got out of bodybuilding, dropped Is the size, true? dropped the steroids, yep. And then Go went on, straight on to acting. Straight on to movies, dropped the size, athletic. Um, he did do another show back in the 80s to promote bodybuilding, but he robbed everyone. Yeah. Which I love Arnold. He yeah. robbed everyone. Mike Mentor, I'm you sorry, mean, mate. Robbed him of robbed no, the title. He he went he he came back and because he was Arnold, it was like, oh, you've won. He won the 74. Oh, no, he didn't. Six years. He looked in 74, best man to ever walk the earth. Yeah. In the eight, 1980, six years later, he what he was Arnold. Not, not so much. Star power. Okay. Made him beat yeah, Mike yeah, Mensa. Yeah. yeah. And it was hard for and Mike. You're Mensa. saying Mike Mensa was definitely better. Yeah. Okay. And Mike Mensa sadly died. I mean, not long, but he was addicted to... Mike Mensa was interesting because I think he was a professor of psychology Mike okay. and his brother Ray. And they yeah. met, experiment with LSD and all sorts of cool stuff in the 80s. Right. But um, Mike Mensa was Dorian's mentor. Mm. But yeah, they all got out. So Arnold got out. Lee Haney. Lee Haney's still alive. Frank mm. Zane's still alive. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Larry Scott died not long ago. But all these guys got 70 plus. Mm. It's only when the new decade came. Jay Cutler got out yeah. at about 39, I think. Yeah. But now you have Mr. Olympia, Sean Roden, 43, sadly dead. dead. Mm. Um, you've got Phil Heath. He's kind of give up uh, pushing push bodybuilding now, but Ronnie's in a wheelchair. Like Mr. Olympia's now, they're very different to how they was back then because they got out back then. Because yeah. I think like me, they saw it and went, what am I going to become mm -hmm. if I stay in this game? Yeah. Am I going to be 40 years old still trying to be the big guy in the gym when I know I'm fighting time? Because mm. they got out, 30s, they kind of all got out. Dorian Yates did and... Went that, a different world. That's that's interesting. So so when did Dorian he, he, was he in his? I'm 30s? not super specific. No, but I reckon I 34, 35. He, he, Max. Yeah, he came in, did what he did, and fucked off. He says on Joe mm. Rogan and London Real, he says that that was the bodybuilder in me, and then I just abandoned that that mm. attitude. I think that's incredible, and I've modelled myself on that. But he, he just gave it up. He just like Arnold. He went. I'm into films now. Buy bodybuilding. Yeah, yeah, not yeah. many people can do that. That shows they had very very high levels of control. That's interesting. It's uh, because. Uh, well, I've, I've, I might have a chance to interview uh, Dorian. Possibly, I'm gonna. I'm, hopefully, I can do that. That'd be awesome. That'll we'll be, we'll that'd sit be cool. there. Yeah, You'll, yeah. Just sit in the Huge corner. Huge fan like, of Dorian. Keep talking. Um, but I've had similar thoughts, and it's partly it's partly age, it's partly everything, it's partly like the conversation I've gone back and forth with with uh, Danny for years, which is I don't train in a disciplined way, and I train partly to mitigate the insanity inside mm -hmm. my head. Yeah. Stack loads of cortisol, can't sleep, eat yeah. like shit afterwards, and it's a mess. Mm -hmm. He's been telling me to stop for years. And I, <laughs> I, don't, I don't listen to him because yeah. why would I listen to somebody who knows what they're doing? No, well, no. Well, what, are you, would, what are you? What are you crazy? That would end well, the yes. problem. No one does that. <laughs> then I'd then I'd have to face the real problems in my life. Um, did you ever dream bodybuild? Did it get into your head where you're dreaming about yeah. it and having nightmares about it? Hundred percent, man. Both 100%. of you had that. And would that only be in the lead up to competitions or? No, 24 7, All the time. 365, bodybuilding was everything. That's why I wore the clothes. It's because I couldn't have yeah. someone look. I don't even, now I think back, I'm like, why wouldn't I wear a t shirt in the gym when it's the summer? You yeah. should have seen the shit I was doing. Mm. And I'm not calling myself an idiot. Like I said, I have huge respect for bodybuilders. It's one of the few things in the world you can do that you can't just buy your way into. Mm. You know, you're spending a decade or two crafting this, this walking piece of art. You can't buy your way into bodybuilding. So I respect it to, to, to the death. But. Mm. Like you said, I was wearing weird shit. I didn't mm. want people to, I didn't, my arms must have been, my, I mean, my arms are decently sized now, but they were big back, I was bigger then. Mm. And I'd be terrified of the thought of you guys seeing my physique or my mm. calves. Just mm. in case you didn't, you, you just said, hey, small calves, you, I'd be like, fucking hell. Wearing a hoodie in the That's summer. That's how vulnerable, yeah, I was. That's yeah. how vulnerable you are. But it, it's not, so it's not a dissimilar sort of a psychosis to people who are obsessed with martial arts and with, with violence. Like I was obsessed with violence. I was obsessed with fights. And I would think about it that much that I would have nightmares about it and obsessive dreams. Like this is what you do against the right cross. Mm -hmm. And this is what you do against the right cross. Mm -hmm. And I can't fucking yeah. sleep. Just in case you get right cross. Just in case yeah. somebody throws a right cross at you. <laughs> and I'd be, it was, and the only thing I could do to stop that was to start lifting weights and just be like, don't so, worry. Well, that's kind of why I did Muay Thai. I did the opposite so you've done to you. The, you're doing Muay Thai to escape the fucking insanity. I got into Muay Thai. I was like, this is quite fun. I'm moving. My heart rate's high. Mm -hmm. and, and you don't give a shit, do you? I don't care if I progress in Muay Thai. I don't care. But yeah. it's great. It's my release. Yeah. Whereas bodybuilding for me, I mean, I am, it's depressing for me almost to perform on a substandard level. It's yeah. depressing. 
When yeah. you've been in the gym and you've done some of my lifts, 100 kilo overhead press for 12, and now I do 80 for, for eight. Yeah. I'm like, fucking hell, man. You feel bad. You've got that. to come back. <laughs> Are you with with your running and stuff? Is that you sort of fucking the bodybuilding off a little bit as well? It's just a... no. I I still lift because I want to look decent, mm. but I like running. I like I like being I like being fit. Mm -hmm. I like feeling fit, mm. especially because I'm forty five. Mm -hmm. I think once you get to a certain age, you start going fuck. I'm getting on a little bit here. Mm. So then you so then I think your outlook on life changes ever so slightly. So I enjoy just nipping out and doing a half marathon. And I enjoy going to the gym and pressing hundred kilos. When you were obsessed with the bodybuilding, what do you think you were trying to prove and to who? Um, when I was balls deep in bodybuilding, I just wanted to be the biggest person in the room. Why? What's it, what does it compensate for? Um, I don't know. I, I, can, I can see that like I was obsessed with fighting and martial arts because I got bullied as a kid and I couldn't do anything about it. So because I felt impotent there. There was Jeff Thompson that uh, he's, he's famous in the- I read his book. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Have you? oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so he's he's famous in that yeah. world. I met him a couple of times. Jeff Thompson. And he was like, you're fighting demons that are long since Have you met him recently? No. Have you seen any of his content recently? No. Is it everything happens he's to be as great as his book? One of his books. Um, Am I thinking about something else? I don't know. Jeff Thompson is the next- absolute lunatic doorman. Uh, I read his first book. It was something like One Punch or... The one Punch Knockout. Is he a lunatic like, doorman? Oh, I need to read that. Absolute yeah. mental. But he's, mad, yeah. he's... When did I... I listened to a podcast that he did. He's written some fucking great books. Mm. I listened to a podcast that he did probably 12 months ago. Yeah. Not at all how you'd expect him to be. Ultra spiritual? F fucking more than that. The, yeah. the, the seeds of that was there, like, because whenever I asked him about violence when I was 18, which would have been like probably looking up at a big bodybuilder, was me talk, talking to Jeff Thompson. Yeah, I, was yeah, in yeah. His, I was in his uh, uh, kitchen a couple of times, having a Jaffa cake and a cup of tea. You totally do. fucking starstruck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was just like, oh my God, this is like talking to the, the second coming of Christ. And I'd be asking him about violence and he'd be like, well, you want to make sure you've got God in your corner. Make sure yeah. you're a good person. Yeah, yeah, Have your yeah. soul in alignment. I was like, <laughs> I thought you'd tell me I'd mm. like bite their ear off or headbutt yeah. them or something. He was like, no, 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 just try and be a good. Very, just, very spiritual now. Could you see I was a young nutcase? So what, do, do you think you were compensating for something? Was there was something I'd driving I'd love to know, session? but I think as I get older, I'm still exploring this issue. But I do think really, I just thought I wanted to be, I'd be good Bigger. at something. Yeah. And I think that's what, I was good at bodybuilding. I've never been good at anything mm. in life. I always, I was always an introvert and in school, I always was athletic, like I could play football, I like kickbox, but the problem with me, and I'd love to hear your opinion on it, I was I was not amazing at football, but I was good at football in training. Mm. They put me in a game, crumble, I wouldn't do a fucking thing. Right. I wouldn't ask for the ball, I wouldn't want the ball, I'd, yeah, want, I'd yeah. want to be pulled off and put on the bench. Yeah. And I'm like, thank God I'm off the pitch. Yeah. But in training, I couldn't get enough of being on the ball. Yeah. For me, bodybuilding, it was the only thing I was good at. Only thing I was good at still now. I've tried other things. <laughs> I, I, I had a similar problem. I don't know what it is. Uh, rugby. I was actually really good at rugby, but I fucking hated competing. Yeah. That's what I the think idea it was. that people are going to scream at me and be like, do this or that. No, fuck off. I'll do nothing. I couldn't play. I could not play in a game. <laughs> I was too nervous. Yeah. yeah. My my son's really good at football. He's nine. So he's really good. But he's really good at football. On a Wednesday, they have their training sessions. Mm. They're all like Ronaldo. Uh, They're all doing flicks and turns and this yeah. and another. On a Saturday in the game, they're Go all like, yeah. it's fascinating. <laughs> uh, and you're like, just, what happened to me, man? Move. <laughs> Swear to God. It's, 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 it's a thing, isn't it? I used to get scared. What if I do score? What's my celebration going to be? That'll be embarrassing. That'll be a shit celebration, that. Yeah. I didn't want to score in the end because I didn't want to celebrate. No, I, I, no, <laughs> Always I know thinking, that. son. Always I know thinking. That. Um, uh, that came up in a martial arts seminar. They were talking about, uh, like, uh, competing and fighting. And I'd be worried about really weird stuff like, uh, what if I got into a fight and my shoe fell off and people saw me wrestling with one shoe on? Mm. I'm weird like that. And what I, is and that, I'd Richard? Just get upset. What is this? I'd, I'd, be like, <laughs> and I'd be like, does it fucking matter? You're getting mm. you're in a fight for fuck's sake. I've thought something like that. What if, me, what if like, I'm in a fight, someone grabs me hoodie and we pull me top off and I'm not in shape? I'm like, I've got to be, a, <laughs> yeah. I've got to be decently lean if he's took my hoodie off. Yeah. Or do I just take the hoodie off first so I'm topless then and I'm Listen, more aggressive? I don't mind getting stabbed to death, <laughs> but I don't want to look a cunt. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> do it properly, mate. It's strange how your head works, isn't it? I, Massively insane. I don't sleep naked just in case someone breaks into the house and I've got to fight with them. Same. Everybody. 
birds have ever been was like, can you not sleep without your underwear? And I'm like, what if the ninjas come? <laughs> if the fucking ninjas come and my little tinky winkies flying around. It's I a don't thing. want to die like that, Jacob. Can you imagine running down the stairs with no clothes on <laughs> oh, and a stick no. in your hand? I've, I've always, you need slept, to have some I've always wanted on. to be a Spartan personally, so I just thought they come in, they can have it like that. Stand at the nice. top of the stairway, just like a statue <laughs> with a fucking... <laughs> Zyphos <laughs> ready to go, mate. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. and you hit the helmet with the brush on. If you come in my house and, and take I'm, them, <laughs> yeah, I hope I hope it would scare. If they weren't scared imagine? of that, yeah. doesn't matter, mate. I'm so sorry. <laughs> we'll go. We'll clean up. Go back to sleep. Run. Get don't back never, in this house. Don't forget the time they came to Thermopylae on really? my staircase. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> it's, it's, it's weird where your head goes to, isn't it? But why is that? Why do we do that? I'd love to know. I think, I think oh my God. it's it's going to be some oh, sort of that was amazing. retroactive justification for something else. Like your mind is saying, my problem is this, but essentially it's something like performance anxiety. Really? You don't want to be tested in front of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, it's that's a strange thing, which is... Um, uh, in my experience of the bodybuilders and also I'm um, uh, interviewing Joe Bromley Yeah, tomorrow. he said. I just did a video with Joe today. Oh, have you? On calf training. Oh, have you? Yeah, it's going to be good, man. Oh, because I was going to ask calves. the three of you to do a calf training video. Okay, so you've done that. Good. I'll watch That'll that. I might, I might bring you an in An hour, again. six exercises, three each. Awesome. An hour, 20 on calves. An They're blitz right now. Calves. He's trained calves more than the majority of people in, in, in the Northwest have ever trained them. <laughs> in a day to day. <laughs> in a day. <laughs> Um, and, and I think like a lot of people who do like the guys I know are big into strongman stuff, big into powerlifting, big into bodybuilding, the majority are introverts. Yeah. And I'm like, so there's this image, uh, bodybuilding, strongman, powerlifting, it's all going to be a bunch of alpha male, high testosterone thugs who are like this and they're all talk. And you go, do you know, like a lot of these guys, kind of nerdy they're into like yeah. their books their films their comics their computer games and stuff they look like monsters mm. yeah, yeah. but they're actually pretty quiet philosophical 100%. types because of theories. what it takes to actually grow muscle tell yeah. me you, to actually grow muscle you need to stimulate it and you need to recover right so you're going to recover by not doing a lot you're yeah. going to recover by staying in yeah and reading books right and not going out and getting leathered and doing all kind of crazy stuff you just want to keep stress down. You want to recover as much as you humanly possibly can. So that's that's yeah. what they do. I think you have to be an introvert to be a good bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. Arnold might be the exception, but I do believe like you have to be an introvert. And the reason is, as everyone ever knows with bodybuilders, we'd get stopped far too soon. Like people say, oh, you do it for the girls. You do it mm -hmm. for, so you're bigger than other men. I'm like, listen, I wouldn't do this to impress women. Girls hate it. I wouldn't do this to be bigger than other men because it's too much fucking effort. Mm. I do it because it, it's something that, you know, is empowering to me because like bodybuilders would stop at the first sign of that, a real bodybuilder anyway. Once mm. they got a bit of abs and chest, if it was for girls, they'd stop. Mm. They yeah. do. Once yeah. they got big enough than bigger other men in the room, they'd probably stop there because now they can beat everyone up. Yeah. Bodybuilders go to that extreme extent because I don't really care what people thought of me on that level. Mm. Yeah. You know, I, I've had partners in the past that always say, wear a tighter t-shirt. You look good. Like mm. when we go out, like wear a tighter t-shirt. And I'd be like, no way. I don't want to do that. Yeah. I'm happy. Just, I don't give a shit. Like if anyone thinks I look big or anything, it's, you know, it's for me. Yeah. I don't like standing out, which is really weird to say when you put I'm your, trying to be 270. Put, put your pants on, put the fake tan on and stand there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. People. yeah but I don't like standing out. I don't like standing but I don't out. Like, yeah, I don't like standing out. Like if someone goes, oh, you're massive. I'd be like, whoa, okay, sweet man. I wouldn't. So what what advice um, would you give to to uh, anybody, not just young lads in their 20s, but like what, what would you say about this whole steroids, the bodybuilding thing? If people, okay, for example, men think it's good for getting goals. Is it? Nope. I, I don't think so. I've never seen a bodybuilder, a real bodybuilder, who's amazing with women. They nope. seem to be mutually exclusive talents. Yeah. Yeah, they have to be because when you take that much anabolics at that level, again, I hate, I've got so many bodybuilder friends and I hope I'm not offending them. But at that level, when you're taking five, four grams, which is like, you know, you, you don't you don't think you know what, what's east and what's west at that point. You don't even know what's what a, what a relationship is because half the year you're doing one thing, half the year you're doing the other. Mm. You know, I don't really think that they can have a functional relationship with things like trembolone and things like hard hitting hormones because testosterone's a hormone. Yeah. It's a sex hormone. It, yeah. There's no way that you're going to have a functional relation. I don't think, I mean, mm. I've got plenty of friends who got with bodybuilders. So the man and the woman are both bodybuilders and that seems to be quite a successful mm -hmm. that combination. Combined. Yes. But I feel yes. like as far as a normal woman and a, and a very intense bodybuilding man. Are you saying trend would come in the way of a normal relationship? Is that what you're saying? As a bodybuilder, I'm going to say no. I don't, <laughs> I don't want my friends getting in trouble. <laughs> 
I've certainly experienced that. And I've yeah. only got on the trend train once or twice in my life. Yeah. Usually survive about three weeks, smash up the furniture in the house yes. and go, I think this I might think be changing to stop me. this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely not the normal happy person I am uh, yeah. when I'm not on this stuff. I know that it affects a certain number of people. I remember this from back when I was doing psychology research in the probation service. There's a percentage of the population of men who will get uh, psychosis and juice from steroid use. Some research. In the yeah. Place. I remember you saying that to me and I thought that's very interesting. And I am in that percentage. Mm. Yeah. Turns out. Turns out. I always felt like I was who pretty knew? fine on it all, to be honest. I always felt like I was always level-headed and never wanted trouble with anybody. But that's mm. all. I always said steroids just exaggerate your, your already core personality. Just mm. like with some drinking brings out like aggression and yep. nastiness. I think yep. it can also bring out people's softer sides. Yes. I think you asked before what advice would we give? I think that please, if I could give anyone any advice, please don't take this conversation and allow it to stigmatize TRT because testosterone is something every single man watching this should be aware of mm -hmm. because low testosterone kills just as many men as high 100%. testosterone. And it's, it's That's people's what natural I want testosterone to. is declining massively. Yeah. And the stigma of, the, of this the, the, is why well, they're not yeah. medicating it. So I'm not doing any jabs. That's mm -hmm. what bodybuilders, juice heads do. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. Do your jabs, man, because low would testosterone. You, would you both advocate TRT? Yeah. If necessary, you need to address it yeah. now. I've got for clients. Most of my uh, client base is professionals, 40 and above. That is the age people go, midlife crisis. No, 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 no. Testosterone's declining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Insecurity, you know, bone structure's now weak, lack of motivation, no sex drive, no self-confidence. Mm. That's fucking catastrophic. Yeah. That is catastrophic. They need to medicate. And do you know how many men have went to me? I'm not doing that shit. You, juice heads jab up. No, mate, you need to, don't let that, don't let bodybuilders stigmatize that. You yeah. did You did say at the beginning that when we're having this conversation about taking steroids, yes. what we meant was taking it to excess. Yes. Super physiological doses. Super physiological, Super physiological, physiological doses. dosages. But for TRT, most men probably want to go and get their levels checked. And yes. If it's, if it's below, don't be scared of, of injecting. Oh, I've got to be on it for life. Well, it's better than dying at 60 yeah. because, I mean, the, the problems with low testosterone are ridiculous. I mean, it's the male suicide. You know better than me, Rich. When it mm. spikes, is it like 45, 50 yeah. years old or something? Yeah. Why is that? Yeah, it's no, that's no real surprise, is it? When Making you look at testosterone levels, yeah. Insecurity, inability to be your own self, no yeah. confidence. Obviously, your heart health's on a decline. You're probably not looking after yourself because you've got no energy. Mm. Of course, you're going to want to leave the world. Did you uh, hear... Huberman say that testosterone is the hormone that makes effort feel good. I didn't hear that, but that's cool. That's good, no. isn't it? Of course. Isn't that nice? Yeah. It actually makes you enjoy discipline, effort, yeah. consistency, and hard work. Testosterone makes that feel good. If you don't have that and you're just sat at home playing video games. You're losing your drive, aren't you? You're losing your want to do things. Exactly. Because when your motivation starts to go, your... Um, levels of activity you're not being arsed with stuff mm. just goes through the roof and then when you can't be arsed you're like well what's the point i might as well have this and i might as well eat this and i might as well stay here and i might as well watch this and i might as well when the reality is if your testosterone levels are where they're supposed to be mm. your energy's on point your motivation's on point your cognitive function is on point your health is on point your libido is where it's supposed to be yeah mm. That's the thing, don't let i know we, we mentioned it but that will be my advice i wouldn't even go into the steroid thing if you're not a bodybuilder you don't need to listen to this shit. Don't worry too much about it. Mm. But please don't let it stigmatize because it does. People go, I'm not jabbing that. Mm. I know I've got friends and I won't name them that used to go, I'm never doing anything like that. Never, never, never. And now they're like every single week, woo, TRT, mm. happy yeah. as ever. It's yeah. changed my life. My marriage is fixed. Yeah. But when I met them originally and I, I'm very open about steroids, mm. they're like, I'd never do that, mate. You know, and I respect you, but I'd never jab me, jab my leg. I'm a man, you know. It's like, it, it's like a taboo, it's a taboo, it's taboo thing, taboo, isn't yeah. it? If it was, if we flip it around, Women have been using HRT to better their lives forever. Yeah. But as soon as they, uh, they call it the andropause, don't they, instead of the menopause, when when male testosterone dips, mm. that's like, oh, no, 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 we can't, we can't talk about that. Mm. Yeah. But if you had a female friend who was suffering from uh, hormonal imbalances, you'd be like, go to, go to the doctor and get some HRT. You can sort, sort all this out. Okay, I will. That's brilliant. Mm. You say it to a man, like, no. We're idiots. No. It leads to my Omeprazole story, which I put on my Instagram the other day. I, I, I felt sick for years, obviously because I'm a big fat bodybuilder. Um, my my waist was obviously, I was expanding on a lot of food and stuff like that. And I ended up having acid reflux issues. And I went to the doctors, couldn't train, couldn't do leg training because I was feeling sick. Mm. I went to the doctors, went, try this omeprazole. I was like, nah, not touching that. Here I am. Uh, two years after that, now taking omeprazole, changed my life. <laughs> yeah, really. That's how stupid yeah, we yeah, can yeah. be. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, a lot of men don't want the answer, do they? They'll do, they'll, they'll, 
they'll want to know but won't want the answer. Don't stig that's the yeah. thing. Don't stigmatize yeah. testosterone yeah. and say, well, it's a bodybuilding drug. It's the drug to keep a happy, healthy, stable man. Yeah. What is the thing that frustrates you the most in uh, the gym scene at the moment? The thing that annoys you that sends you off on a rant the most that you're seeing in the gym scene? I don't I don't know if anything I don't know if anything annoys me. I think I think looking around gyms, I think there's a lack of intensity. I don't, it's very rare that you see anybody sweating mm. in the gym anymore. Mm. So I think that sometimes when I'm sat and I kind of go off in my own head and I'm looking around and I'm like, no one's training hard. Yeah. Nobody in here is pushing themselves to the point where they're going to get results. Yeah. That's the only thing, but I don't really give a fuck anymore. <laughs> Is, it, is there anything for you? It's a hard one. I could go down many avenues, but do you know what I think it is? What really upsets me is just excuses um, because people underplay just how magnificent we are, like all of us in terms mm. of man, woman, whatever. We're all a species that essentially is the apex predator on a planet that has fucking alligators and sharks and mm -hmm. we'll kill anything. Mm. And we make out the gyms this big nasty demon. The yeah. only thing we're fucking good at, honestly, is probably training. Mm. We're built to run, we're built to forage, climb, fight. Yeah. That's the only mm. thing we're actually good at. Mm. A lot of these other things, like being an office worker or being an architect, that's just created. We're yeah. actually good at moving. That's what we're born for. So I mm. guess the excuses people have, oh, I don't want to train, I'm too busy in life. I get you're too busy, but this is what you were born to do. Yeah. Well, you, you're actually going against nature. You're mm. defying nature. Mm. That's the crazy bit. And I also don't think people think long-term enough. And I'll have more knowledge on this as I get older and experience it more. But most people at 50, 60, 70 who are constantly stuck looking at the floor because the back's jacked up, mm. it's their fault for putting their office job before their own mm. body. Yeah. And that is 100%. an excuse. Yeah. yeah. And that's probably what annoys me because it's, it's not like no one's good at it. Like, you know, the way we can say you're good at martial arts and you're good at running. It's like, that's things you've, you've honed, but humans are fucking great at exercise. Yeah. All of us. Could, They've given us time. Everyone could be so much better. Yeah. They choose not to be. Naturally as well. Like, all right, don't, don't shame your ancestors because we probably all got six generations ago, all got beastly ancestors. Our <laughs> nans were sick. Yeah. Our great, great granddads were fucking saber-toothed tiger killer machines. Yeah. Your nan would make him a scrambling when he gets home. Like yeah. these are mad people that we need to really remember tough. that are in our DNA. Uh, I started smiling when you said there's a lack of intensity in the gym. I, uh, I, I came off TRT <laughs> and then I went back on it this week. And I noticed I was saying to the lads before we started, I'm a bit grumpy. And then I was asked for examples. I couldn't think of anything. In the gym, when a man finishes his set, does he need to get up from the machine and go like this and walk in a fucking 15 meter circle close to me? Gotta be a bodybuilder. <laughs> Gotta be a bodybuilder. Wow. Like, Gotta okay. be. That's bodybuilder behavior. Like, stay in your fucking section of the gym. Go over there. Gotta be a bodybuilder, <laughs> that, mate. Stop like finishing a set and just going like. Some farmer who's just finished tilling a yeah. field and then do a circuit of the gym. Yeah. But eyeball on your machine as well, just in case anyone wants yeah. to touch it. That's a bodybuilder rich death. And I was, I was like, I, I, I'm a bit cranky. Yeah. <laughs> somebody, somebody walked past me while I was doing a set and looked at the weights that were near me. And I was like, if you, in my head, I was like, if you need a fucking weight, just walk up to it like a man in a direct line and pick it up. Don't look at it like you're selecting buns in a fucking bakery. It was like that. Mm, do, 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 do. And then fucking didn't pick one up. Whoa. Anyway. The fuck just happened then? Jabbed up. Wow. <laughs> Jabbed up on sound now. Shit. <laughs> to get that out. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we just went to something <laughs> if very you, special. If you're going to do something, can you just fucking get on with it? Oh. The gym is an interesting place though. Do, 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 do. Such a mix Why am I not growing? Why am I not making any progress in the gym? This, this yeah. fucking diddly diddly attitude. <laughs> it's mad. It Drifting is. round like jellyfish. If you see me in the gym, just stay away yeah, from me. Stay away from this man. Yeah. He's yeah. highly trained. <laughs> and he loves violence. We've yeah. already heard him say yeah. it. You've heard it here first. <laughs> um, I had something that I wanted to ask you. We do have time for this. Uh, it's one of it's one of the things that's been confusing me and uh, frustrating me. I kind of touch it. Right. You this, can we talk about calories for a second? If you like. A calorie is a calorie. It doesn't matter what you eat. If it's a calorie from uh, um, like chocolate or a calorie from broccoli, it makes no difference whatsoever. True or false? A thousand calories of broccoli has the same impact as a thousand on the body. What's your definition of, of impact? 
If you're talking about purely looks. <laughs> good, good question. If you're talking about purely looks on a looks perspective, mm. I would say, yeah, calories are calorie on a looks perspective. So somebody who's consumed every day a thousand calories of chocolate cake versus a thousand calories of broccoli mm-hmm. for a year, mm-hmm. they're going to look, it's not going to have a looks impact on them. It's such a hard question because theoretically, because you've added the year time frame, that makes it hard. Yeah, okay. You've got to factor in obviously what that's going to do to blood sugar and performance because obviously if you have a, a thousand calories of broccoli and a thousand calories of cake, one's going to give you better energy benefits, which will then therefore directly affect your training and your mindset. And Is but, cake better than broccoli? I'd probably say so. I'd probably, probably, also, I'd probably go with the cake, honestly. A thousand calories of broccoli. A thousand calories a day scaring me. Forget what it is. <laughs> a thousand calories of broccoli. Um, Can you I imagine was, eating that much you broccoli? You'd be shitting Jeez, yourself. You, you'd be I'd go with, I actually think the cake's better for the for because you you would lose game. you'd lose water, you'd lose nutrients, you'd be di- it'd be diarrhea. You right? couldn't just stick with one food choice. But you, no. I think a calorie is a calorie on a thermogenic perspective. Yeah, a yeah. calorie is a calorie because a calorie is just is literally just a unit of measure. However, calories from chicken breast will have a very very different effect on the body than calories from chocolate cake, Mm -hmm. calories from broccoli. So fundamentally, yes, a calorie is a calorie, like a mile is a mile. Yeah. An inch is an inch, a centimeter, centimeter. It's just a unit of measure. What makes, what constitutes the food that, that calories are measured in, Mm. that is completely different. I had a philosopher in here, a doctor of philosophy, and he taught me something. He said something can be uh, true and something can be real and something that is true and something is real, that's not, the same statement. It's not wow. the same thing. So based on what you've just said, mm-hmm. like, okay, so chicken breast, 30% of the chicken breast you consume is the calories are burnt through the thermogenetic the effect, effect of digesting. Yeah. Dietary the, induced thermogenesis. Sorry? Dietary induced thermogenesis. Dietary induced thermogenesis. Yeah. So then is it worth saying to clients who don't understand all these different elements of nutrition, a calorie is a calorie? Or is that possibly going to lead them, not through your yeah. fault, to a faulty conclusion yeah. about what they're eating and what they're exercising? I think most people, and I think me and Danny, we've done the, the Mac Nutrition course, yeah. haven't you? That's one of the greatest courses you can do, Mac Nutrition Uni. I think we would all say that you'd have to do 80 20. I don't think anyone would ever say, coach wise, oh, calories are calories. Yeah. I would always say, calories are calories. But 80% However, of your food should come from good quality food sources. Yeah, right. The 20%, do what you like, put the chocolate yeah. cake in, yeah. put the, some people eat some weird shit, but the 80% of your diet has to be from good quality, wholesome food sources yeah. always. Right. So yeah, you'd, you'd have to, I mean, in any client's diet of mine, any client, they're on a gram of protein per pound of their body weight. Mm. So, they, so in their calories alone, mm. they have to be consuming 200 grams of protein which obviously the thermic effect of that constitutes mm-hmm. to it, performance, recovery, et cetera. But I would never let anyone, I would never say to anyone, oh, you're on 1,500 calories today. Do what you like with it. Just crack on, kid. <laughs> Fuck that. Yeah. Because I go, crack on. can I fit a chippy in? Uh, and that's the issue. Yeah. When we talk about calorie counting, <laughs> the 80-20 rule, people have flipped that and they do the 20-80 rule. Yeah. They? So it's like, so you're saying they can have 2,000 calories a day. Does that mean I can have a pack of chocolate digestives? It fits into me calories. And it's like, right. you're kind of not really getting this. People will suffer oh, for that yeah. as well. They'll go, right, mate. I've had, I got a voice note at half nine at night. Right, mate. Yeah. I've had not an all day. Feel like shit. I've had a, uh, but not, on, I've got a Domino's on the way. It's going to fit me calories though. I, I've died all yeah, day for yeah, it, yeah. but it's going to work. And yeah. I'm like, well, yeah, but yeah. you can't do that. No. Yeah. So, so there's some things that uh, I think are theoretically true that like for the academics or the practitioners, you can talk about it and it's safe. You can go, yeah, calories a calorie, or yeah. it's basically calories in versus calories out. But when I, you, you largely agree, it's calories in. Yeah, versus I agree calories. with that. Yeah, course, you yeah, have yeah. to create a calorie it is, deficit. Yeah. But as I know from teaching psychology, if you go to Mary, age forty-four, never been in a gym before in her life, and you say the words that are absolutely scientifically true, it's calories in versus calories out. You have to create a deficit you know full well that Mary's going to interpret that as I can have a glass of wine as yes. long as I do 10 jumping jacks yes. afterwards. Yes. So wh- how do you account for that? Do you just go, okay, I'm not going to tell my clients the truth or? I don't, I just don't, re- I don't talk about calories the majority of the time with my clients. I don't, right. I don't, to negate that, I don't go, it, fundamentally, yeah. it's calories in versus calories out because everything you say after that is just, mm, 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 and, right. they're, and they're seeing glass of wine. Yeah. He said I could have a glass of wine. 
as long a as McDonald's I do, breakfast. He said I could have a McDonald's breakfast. Yeah. As long as I burn it off afterwards. Yeah. As long as you burn it off afterwards, which is going to take you about fucking six months. Yeah. I, um, I always progressively expose my clients. It's one thing I've always yeah. done. So I don't ever go, well, here's calories. Here's your training. Here's progressive yeah. overload. Here's your yeah. supplementation. I yeah. will just do things as a crafty coach like yourself. Mm. And I'll say, okay, well, here's our diet. Here's an example of what I would like you to eat. The main thing I want you to focus on is protein. Yeah, so 100%. track 200 grams of protein today. Yeah, yeah. And they go, oh, I get, get used to this. They track the protein, they're happy, the fats are everywhere, the carbs are everywhere. But I don't yeah. tell them. Yeah. Once they nailed the protein, they go, right, now we're going to introduce you to carbs. Yeah, okay. This is what carbs do. This yeah, is how, because people, like you said, on, on, on face value, you give people a single piece of information, you, you find they you just, lose They balance. interpret it however they yeah. feel like interpreting it. But if you get them into the whole mindset of, well, they don't really realize what you're doing until yeah. you do it. And that's what good coaching mm -hmm. is. But mm -hmm. you're just progressively exposing them to more and more complex ideas. Yeah inside the structure of things you're pre-explaining along the way. Crafty coaching. Crafty like coaching, that. but it's good, good because training, I do it all the time. I teach people how to progressively overload without ever telling them the word, mm -hmm. you yes. know? I'm just like, you know, first exercise, we focus on that a little bit. That's yeah. one we're going to think about and log, but the rest we don't care. Yeah. I, I was doing that instinctively with um, the martial arts training. I'd never give my client the objectives. I'd say, what do you want? Yeah. And then I'd go, okay. And then I'd reinterpret it and go, okay, this is, this is how we're going to, get there and then just give them whilst they were training a ton of validation. You're doing really well. Yeah, you're yeah. doing really great. Knowing that it's not perfect, but I have to get them to put the fucking reps in. Mm -hmm. Good example. It's boxing or it's kickboxing. Am I doing it right? And in my head, I'm like, oh, you fuck. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're doing it perfectly right. But and then in my head, I'm going for practice. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You're doing the reps. You're because you know this, like, well, we, we've, we've all done Muay Thai. Muay Thai is an yeah. example. You will not get those moves correct inside of six months of training. You're talking 12 to 18 months and you must, it's a very non-Western mindset. It's Eastern mindset. Switch your brain off, put the fucking reps in. Yeah. If you're very consistent for 18 months, you might look like somebody from Thailand, maybe a quarter of the time you're training. Yeah. Cause why? Because they do it from when they're kids. Yeah. It's a good example with bodybuilding. People come to me and go, oh, watch me weak points, Tyler. They send me a picture. What are my weak points? I went, your whole body's a weak point. Yeah. In the sense that you shouldn't even be talking about weak points yeah, yeah, until yeah. you're 20 years into the game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. when you've just started in your first year, how can you have a weak point? Yeah. As though everything else is a strong point. Yeah, 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 yeah. like Muay Thai, <laughs> if you work on someone's, if you introduce someone to Muay Thai and go, right, we've got footwork, movement, this yeah. drill, that drill, yeah. you go, fuck that. Yeah. But after two, three, four years, you make a mate, right, now we're going to focus on your footwork because that's yes. not really kept mm -hmm. up with everything else. Yes. You know? Finally, after three years, we could deal with the shitty footwork. Yeah, we finally, we could stop minute. him doing that. My <laughs> mate down. did it to me. I need to talk to you. <laughs> yeah. So, so you don't, you don't feel the, uh, you're not, you don't pressure yourself to be like, I have to tell my clients absolutely everything up front. You know, all that, all, all that's going to happen is you're going to give them too much information. They are going to selectively hear what they want to hear. Yeah. And then they're going to go away and then their subconscious is, is going to fill in the gaps yeah. Yeah, depending on what they want to do. Yeah. So it's this, this is this, I'm gonna eat, eat this many calories. Yeah, no problem at all. He said I could eat this many calories. He actually didn't say, which means that he didn't say that I couldn't. <laughs> I'll have this Mackey's. The mind is a cunning, Ooh, cunning creature, yeah, it isn't is. it? Yeah, it is. And you've got to be cunning thing, as a coach because yeah. people think I'll just slap loads of info at my client. You just yeah. overload them. Yeah. yeah. So um, you've got you've got to outsmart their efforts to outsmart what you've already yeah. taught you. It's if, like chess, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. If you... Um, Muay Thai, great example. You know, I kept my left hand down for ages. Yeah. But if he said to me on the first session, right, that left hand needs to be glued. Yeah. I probably wouldn't have found it fun. It's because much, yeah. I've got that, my footwork. Yeah. You know, I'm moving. I, I can't really get it anyway. Like, yeah. whereas after, I think I'd done it a year, he was like, right, that left hand. And I've never dropped it since because it was just one thing to work on. Mm. So I right, glue it to me now or glue this to me chin. And, and then it was fine because I've eliminated all these little stragglers on the way. Yes. But if you introduce someone day one into like, okay, you just got to move more and eat less. They're going to go, what the fuck I pay you for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. If you've summarized my entire journey in a sentence. Yeah. Because it clearly isn't that easy because we've got an obesity epidemic. Mm, yes, yes. It's uh, it's picking your battles, isn't it, with clients? I, yeah. Like I see that the last few times I've, I've taken people for boxing and they're like, oh, he's not giving me any criticism. I must be amazing. And I'm like, oh, I've just given up. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm just not going to deal with that yet. You're, you're moving. You're here. Fucking great. You're here. Let's go. We're doing it. It's not perfect, but you know, you, you, a little bit at a time, you are getting better. So, do you do you just do that instinctively with a client? You'll be like, "I'm going to pick this battle and just ignore these other four things." I, I have a I have a process that I go through, but it's a loose process, right? Because I have 
I have people come to me that have had a whole bunch of other coaches. So they know, they know a bit. Yeah. But I also have people come to me that have never fucking looked at their diet. They've never never looked at the training. Their sleep's all over the place. Their self-belief, the mindset's completely gone. So I would start them at a slightly different place. Yeah. But if someone comes in who already knows a lot, yeah, I'm not going to say, so do you know what protein does? Because they're going to go, how, how much have I just fucking paid you? Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's very, very different. Everyone's, yeah. with real coaching, Yeah. It's different. Everybody, yeah. every, everybody who comes through the door, they're at a completely different place in life. Yes. I've, I've always said when I'm teaching coaches how to coach when it's psychology, it's got more to do with like a sales pitch. You've got it because they, they'll go, oh, well, my client wants to get better. They don't actually. Oh, my client knows what the problems are. Well, they have got a fucking clue what the problems are. They really wouldn't need us. If they actually had correctly mapped exactly what the emotional or psychological issue was, and then they were prepared to work towards it, chances are they'd, they'd hit it 90% of the time. They don't know what the problem is. And they are not just trying to heal. These are That's like naive coaching, isn't it? Mm-hmm. You're like, yeah. oh, my client's just trying to lose weight. Eh, this could th- be a whole other podcast. This could be. This yeah. could be. This could be. A they're, actually, they're actually trying to lose Series. L- they're actually trying to lose weight while still drinking 20 pints at the weekend. Yeah. Or, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coaching's difficult. Not, the what, sorry? Coaching's difficult, isn't it's it? If you, real good coaching isn't as simple as presenting information. Yeah. I've had clients that their husband's been sneaking olive oil in their food. Yeah. That, that's a big one. If you coach people in relationships, you get a lot of new Deliberately issues. Sneaking. Deliberately Deliberately. Yeah. Why? Because they didn't want their wife to lose weight. You're because I guess that would kidding. that would encourage them to probably lose. Well, if you're in a marriage and your wife's forty and she's like, "Listen, I'm, I'm you know, I want to change my life," immediately you get friction. Like, Fuck whoa, yeah. that means I have to change mine. You know, f that. I'm enjoying life, drinking pints with the boys, so they will spike. Well, they don't spike it that way. I had one woman. Um, she used to eat a lot of peas, obviously on the plan. She's like, "You're a vegetable and whatever else." And she was like, "I, I caught my husband putting butter in me peas and olive oil." And I said, "What are you doing?" Like. Why are you doing it? Because that's how you like them. You've always liked them like that. I'm not having you stop the way you like having your peas just for this stupid fitness journey. And it's like, yeah. they're, they're probably- it, bring, it brings their own behavior into question then, doesn't it? I fucking, that happens a lot, I by fucking the way. fucking hate people. Do you mm. know that? Yeah. People are trash. Hey, not, are not all of them. No, you're all trash. I'm trash as well. <laughs> it's, it's, it, it's, We're it's, trash. It's, it's a, it, I'm a total misanthrope. And uh, it's a hard, it's a weird job because I hear stories like that. And yeah, I just yeah. think, fuck it. And I've never knew how to solve that, by the way. Like as a coach, it's beyond my area of expertise. Well, I'm just like, listen, because obviously if that's happening, I don't know what else is happening. Yeah, you can only do what you can do. You can't be in their house yeah. all the time. Well, that that's, that's actually another very interesting area of overlap with what I do with people is because there's, you're fighting uh, a cultural drift our culture drifts towards calories. My family wants to meet up. They want to eat. Mm. Yeah. That's nice. That's, that's love. It's a bonding. Mm-hmm. It's what we do together. You need it to let every culture, every nation, everywhere in the world does that. And I've always just thought, a stupid thought in my head, what would it be like if instead of eating, we all just got together and played table tennis? Or we all just got together and- Did, act- some, did activity. Something. Yeah, something yeah, yeah. other it's than true. sit down, yeah. eat food, drink, drink, and talk. British culture is definitely drink oriented, isn't yeah. it? Fucking hell. So, we spoke um, about this before. Yeah. Mm. Well, it, you mentioned before, like uh, not injecting TRT. People go, I'm not injecting yeah. uh, testosterone. But you will go and have ten pints of Stella on yes, Friday. I will. Yeah. I will knock a bottle of vodka before I go out. You're, fr- you're afraid. That's, that's fine. You're afraid of this. You you see no yeah. fear. This is you can clean the floor with this shit. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to fucking guzzle it yeah. down. Yeah, it's funny what we're afraid of. It is, and it's again. I just I used to care about people being like that, and then I kind of realized in life you can't because there are some people that just think they're exceptions to the rule. Yeah, like they will say, "Oh, you stupid juicer, that's going to kill you." Like they did that on my comment section when I went viral on Facebook. You're going to die. You're going to die. I look at their page, you know, yeah. they're looking for anyone who's selling sleeves, a Lambert and Butler from the airport. And I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I get your, I get your all high and mighty, but you're still smoking. You, you know, you're ingesting smoke. Yes. I know, I know it's we're not the same, but like people genuinely do think they oh, look no, it's down not the upon. It's people. not the same. You will die a lot yeah. faster. And the, the, the research shows a very clear yeah. uh, link. But it became, I think because it's for vanity, testosterone and anabolics are seen as like, you must be an arsehole if you're taking them because yeah. you're just doing it to look good. Yeah. But if you smoke right. because you're killing yourself quietly in the corner. That's fine. You're all right though, you know, mate. You know, it's like almost as if anyone wants to, because it's bettering yourself to some extent. It's like, oh, that's not on. Yeah, that, that might be a little bit of a British problem, might it? Probably or, is. Or like self-improvement. Because most people I've met are like bodybuilding's cool. They're like, I know there's steroids involved, but you work hard. Yeah. And bodybuilders do work hard, but yeah, for the most population, they just think it's a, they don't understand it and people don't know, they don't know, do they? Yeah. 
Gentlemen, I appreciate you both coming in. I appreciate you. Wonderful, man. You you. appreciate me. I always appreciate you. You are fucking gorgeous. Thank you. As soon as the camera's off, I'm having some of that. (laughs) You can hold the camera. Thank you so much. Pleasure, man. I'm going to give you the weirdest handshake on earth. Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you uh, very much. You can find uh, Mr. Tyler Cook via his Instagram. Is that the main place? Yeah, it's still Tyler Cookzilla on Instagram. And everything comes through there. No fucking about Tyler Cookzilla. On yeah. Instagram. I, I got a blue tick with that name. I can't change it in case anyone's wondering oh, why I haven't look changed at this it. Motherfucker with the blue tick. Baby. But they give me it with that. They won't look let me change this it. guy. They're look like, up. if you change that name, we're taking your verification. You have to stay I have Tyler to stay Tyler because I would like to have changed it, but I can't. Oh, that's worse oh. names. There is worse names. I think it's Just don't cool. remove it now. I like it. I'm going to call myself Danny Cookzilla. Yeah. <laughs> and you're on Instagram, Danny Wilson coaching. And that is all you need to know. Yeah. Ladies and gents, thank you very much for your time and for your attention. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.